Hey, let's all praise the Lord. Praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord, for your mercy, for your goodness. We'll all do it together. Come on. We praise you, Lord. We glorify you. Thank you for sparing us from the pit. Thank you for redeeming our lives. Thank you for setting our feet on a rock. We praise you. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. All right. That's fun, huh? Because he inhabits our praise. When we're praising him, he's in here and he comes out and he inhabits our praise. Um, okay, hello everybody. Most of you guys know me. I'm Pete Stevens and I um, love this place. I, love, I got set free here in that back office. Rick cast some heroin spirits out of me. I walked out through that front door when I swung the door open. I knew I was free and sure enough, I, my life has just transformed and changed and God's moving and it's just great. It's incredible. I was a homeless guy on the street with a sign. And this is so much better. Thank you, Father. And he's going to do the same thing for you guys. Whatever you're struggling with tonight, whatever it is, if it's a little thing, it's a big thing, if it's porn, if it's sin, YouTubers, whatever, God can remove it. God is going to remove it tonight. Take a shot tonight. When the altar call comes, you on YouTubers, Run in front of your TV, say, I want mine, and take it. Tonight's your night. Miracle working power here, ADC. Okay, I got a few announcements. That's not it. Kelly, you got the Zoom? It's okay. There you go. We got the Zoom on Wednesday night, 6 p.m. Man, that thing's rocking. People are getting healed, delivered, set free. That thing's great. I strongly encourage you guys to get on there. Um, that's at 6 o'clock. You can take a picture of it so you can find it. Um, the bookstore is open. There's offering boxes on the back doors. And for all the other events and stuff going on, you can just check on the Hardcore Christianity website, and that will bring you up to date. Now, YouTubers and all you guys, here's our assignment, what we're going to do. We're going to forget about everything we learned. I just stole this from Rick Norbert. <laughs> He's just telling him. But this is cool. We're going to forget about everything we learned. We're going to dial that back. YouTubers, we're going to forget everything we learned. All the stuff on YouTube. All the preachers we heard. And we're going to listen to what he says. And we're going to go to the next level. And just ask Father. We're going to pray right now. And say, Father, I'm going to go to the next level. Yeah, well, when we're praying, we're going to pray to him. And he's going to take us there. We're going to forget about everything we learned. And we're going to hear what Rick, the message Rick has, and then we're going to go for it. So I'm going to pray, and uh, you guys pray with me. So, Father, I just thank you, Lord, for just, you're just such a miracle-working God full of goodness. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for what you're going to do here tonight. Thank you for all the YouTubers that are going to be blessed. Lord, we give you praise, and we thank you. And, Lord, we just ask that you would help give us a moment of clarity in our minds right now, Lord, that you would help us dial back everything we've learned all that stuff we listened to in the, in the past, we turn it back with your help. Holy Ghost, help us dial it back so we can have a moment of clarity and hear clearly the Word of God preached by Brother Rick. We ask you to anoint the message and bless the altar call with massive deliverance and freedom and healing in Jesus' name. And the YouTubers, Lord, that they would dial it back and they would be healed. Their lives would be transformed in these times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Te testing, testing, testing. I should do good tonight. Nobody showed up last Thursday, so I preached to myself. So I'm ready to go now. The whole world is like two locomotives. Ooh, which one's the strongest one? Which one are, will survive, righteousness or this stinking world? Everybody's being exposed, hypocrites, people from the synagogue of Satan. Somebody, I assume, running through the CCP, FTX, we go ahead and fund Ukraine, Ukraine, Buys FTX, FTX funds all these Democrats. Oh, boy. 
And if you're a Democrat, we got a special deliverance line for you over there. You like, you like all this chopping kids' genitals. You like people you're living off welfare and putting them in bondage like we did the Native Americans for 100 years. You like aborting babies. That's your line right there. We might not get to you first, but we'll get to you. But you need deliverance, hands down. This thing, I'm seeing people getting sifted like wheat, crushed and pulverized. Oh, he's coming so hard. And he's, it says, be sure over and over in the New Testament that you do not take an offense. I learned I don't take any offense. You think I'm suck? I suck? Remember how it used to be when a homeless person would cuss you out that was mentally ill? That's how I feel about everyone who thinks I suck. It means nothing. It means not saying you're homeless, worthless, and bum. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying whatever you think about me doesn't matter why. Because I, choose, I, I chose to be an overcomer. I can't be taking faults with people who don't like me, who have a problem about what I did to them 20 years ago that's already been washed in the blood, thrown in the sea of forgetfulness, and God doesn't count it against me anymore. So you bring it up, how is it going to make me feel? It's not going to bother me one bit. I'm not taking offense with these psychos running our country. Are they psychos? Oh, yes. The largest deliverance that's ever been in this building ever, in this ministry, was by a famous one of the most famous ministers of all time in America. And Mike was delivering him, and people hoot and holler and scream like mad dogs in here like it's nothing. This was the time he thought for sure the police were coming. He said, if I would have had a butcher knife and was chopping a human being alive, he couldn't have screamed no louder. So could you imagine what kind of spirits these politicians have? When you lie, you speak your father's language. Ooh, that's the devil's language. He's a liar. He's the father of lies. He's been lying from the beginning. When he lies, he speaks from his own resources. Our heavenly father is the God of all truth. The first deliverance I ever had in my life was in six months of being saved, and he told me I was a ticket scalper. All liars go to hell. I said, ooh, that's what we do. We don't directly lie. I'm just boxing you in. See, people tell on themselves. That's why I know what a masterful deceiver a devil is, because whenever you want to buy something, you go to someone who's selling something, and you just watch them. And the minute they get nervous and antsy, we're like, ooh, he's desperate. That means we can chop off X amount of percent off that price that he wants. Ooh, he's, he's scared. Hey, they arrest ticket scalpers back in the day. Now it's a free-for-all. It's not against the law anywhere, but it used to be. And they get nervous. I say, oh, we can chop a whole lot off this price. You just get around people, whatever they were selling. They'd tell on themselves. The devil watches your life. Oh, how many demons? He watches your life. He studies you. He's a, he's a masterful deceiver. And he says, you know what? I don't need a whole lot in this person. I just need him to stay away from Jesus Christ. As long as he's not saved, I already got him because he who is not born again doesn't have eternal life dwelling in him. The only way to the Father is through the Son, Jesus Christ, the only begotten of the Father. There's no other way to the Father except by him and his finished work on the cross. If he didn't die and resurrect on the third day, there is no salvation. So all he has to do is block you from the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's his plan. That's his number one goal. Now somebody gets born again. Oh, I know he's cooked up a little doctrine for you that once you're saved, you're always saved. You think you can smoke crack and sleep with hookers and sell drugs and go to heaven because you had a born, you had an encounter with Jesus Christ? Come on now. He who sins is a slave to sin. That's what the Bible says. Do I know born-again Christians that do those things? Yes, I've met born-again Christians who've led dozens of people to Jesus, have discipled people, and then killed people. So you think they don't need deliverance? That's the most asinine, most confusing doctrine anybody ever cooked up and gave to the body of Christ. Of course you need deliverance. Whatever you're going to open the door, if we open that door tonight at midnight uh, and leave the door open, well, we're going to have meth addicts, we're going to have homeless, mentally ill people wandering these streets. They're going to wander right in here. And then some of them aren't going to just want a warm place to stay. They're going to want the camera. They're going to want the light. They're going to want the flat screens. They're going to want anything of value because they're addicts. That's what they do. No offense. We want them saved. They've spent 20 years working with addicts plus, probably 30 years. All my life I've been working with nothing but addicts. I love them. I want to see them saved. I want to see them delivered. But what they do is pillage things. 
Well, the devil is a pillager. Once you open the door, you leave a door open, he's going to come in and he's going to steal. He's going to kill. He's going to destroy. The Bible told you that. So what do you got to do? Once you get saved, oh, now it's a war. It's a war. The war wasn't already won. The war was won when Jesus died on the cross and he defeated the devil. The war now is won between you and the devil. And there's only one winner, you or the devil. And who's going to win? The Bible says, he who overcomes to the end shall have eternal life. Those are the ones that get the victory. Those who run the race to win the prize. Those who fight the good fight of faith. Those are the ones that wins. Those who don't take an offense. Hey, they're letting, they, I hate to tell you. It's just starting. We want you to come down here. We want you to get healed. You can get healed from anything you put in your body. Street drugs, pharmaceutical drugs, any drugs, jab drugs. And what's happening? They're already dying. Cardiac arrest, flying. The first pilot in Chicago, he died. The co-pilot had to land it. Uh, a uh, guy running an ambulance, he died, he crashed, 23 years old. A professional soccer player, he just died, 22 years old. All this stuff's happening. It's the beginning of it because that stuff was meant to thin it out. And you know who they like? No offense to the third world people, but I was just down in Rocky Point, Mexico. Uh, those are the most affluent business. That you go down to Guatemala, you go down to these, most of the people coming here to America are Guatemalans. Everybody from Mexico that wanted to come here already came here. They already went back, a lot of them. They made some money here. They bought a house. They're living by the beach. They're living a good life. Everything's debt-free. I know many of them who did it. They got tired of it. They built their cash, worked there 30 years, and they went back home. They don't like it here. It was an opportunity to make some cash, which wasn't available where they were from. So now they're coming from deep third world. Well, what are they? They're, those people believe everything they're told. No offense to them. Not all of them. There's born-again, spirit-filled Christians there. There's Holy Ghost men of God doing incredible things in every region of the world. God has his people. But if you go down to Rocky Point, there's pharmacies. There's pharmacies next to each other. Why? Because a doctor is a smart person. I'm sick. I need something from the doctor. Oh, he's going to prescribe a medicine for me. I need a medicine. You're not hearing me. That's who they want to replace you. And it's going to take them a few years. It's going to take 10 years. And now they're weeding everybody out. They're weeding them all out. Look at all the jobs. What they do during COVID, they realized, hey, we don't need people to show up into this office building. We don't need 40,000 square foot. We can have them working remotely. We can get on Zoom and have Zoom conference calls. We just need to be able to do the work that is required. We don't need all this over expenditure. Oh, what do they know now? Somebody will do what you're doing cheaper over in India. Oh, you're not hearing me. You're not understanding what's happening. America is at the crossroads. You're dealing with money that was made out of someone's rear end. And here you go. Janet Yellen. <laughs> take our debt and 5% interest. There's no gold to back that up. You can't take your money and go back it up with gold. This was a nation that our money was back with gold and silver. There was something tangible. Gold and silver have been the money since the beginning of time. Oh, now we're dealing with what? Fictitious things. Why am I saying that at the deliverance ministry? Because you need to come out of deception. You need to come out of delusion. You need to come out of be building your house upon the sand. Because what I'm telling you is the streams are already rising and the storm is coming. And it's going to try you and it's going to show you who you really are and what you're made of. And let me tell you a little flashback for you. Go back and look. If you didn't have a government job, if you had anything to do with real estate, if this, or anything to do with sales, this economy was sank like you can't believe in 2010. Matter of fact, a house like that that was sold right across the street for $50,000 in 2011. That house right now just sold for $450,000. You ever heard of something called inflation? Out of control inflation? What is inflation? It's the devaluing of your money. Is taxation with no representation. There's no more representation in this leadership. They're as corrupt as you cannot believe. And so what are they doing? They're making a place for themselves. And now we're seeing that most of them are working. Hey, you don't have to bow down to Satan. You don't have to make an altar to Satan. There's some people doing that without a shadow of a doubt. They're doing it. 
They're doing the most heinous, wicked things, but you don't have to do that. The Bible says all you have to do is yield yourself. Yield yourself to lie and cheat and to manipulate, no matter how you justify it, no matter what your song you sing yourself, I'm just going to do it for a season. I'm just going to do what I got to do because it's the requirements of this job. Whatever song you sing for yourself, if you're violating your conscience, if you're violating the word of God, you become a slave to the one that told you to do it. And now what happens? He puts chains on you. He puts chains on you. He's a taskmaster. He's a slave master. And he puts what's, what's called holds first. Oh, now you're held back. I'm going to break it down. I'm going str- to teach what a stronghold is. I'm going to help you to break a stronghold. I'm going to show you that deliverance isn't enough to break a stronghold. There's two parts to breaking a stronghold. God can cast out the demons. God can evict them for you. He'll do it, but he won't do everything for you. I hate to tell you this. He did everything for our salvation. He came down and lived the perfect life, the life that we were required to live. He lived tempted in every way, but he had no sin. He dies the death that we deserve. And he exchanges himself, the sinless son of God, in the place of sinners. And he's bloodied and he's beaten and his head is rammed with a crown of thorns. His back has got the skin filleted off the back and he's bleeding down. And it says that blood was shed for the remission of sins. God has shown you what the cost is, what it cost God to save you of your sin, what the cost was to redeem you from the curse so that you didn't go to hell. And you're supposed to look at that sacrifice and realize now you're supposed to live a sacrificial life. You're not supposed to do whatever you want, say whatever you want. I want to have sex. I like orgasm. I really like these things. You, 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 no, that's what the world told you to do. Whatever made you feel good, whatever tantalized your body, whatever made you feel that pleasure, uh, go for it. Oh, you're just a, you're just a accumulation of billions of chemicals over 6,000 years. You're just, a, you're just a chance. We don't know why you're here. Well, there's all these planets. Uh, there's probably life there too. No, you're a man and a woman made in the image of God, and you were called to be with him for eternity. But there was a problem. There was a man named Adam who had free will, and he came before you. He was your grandfather, whether you're white, black, Hispanic, Asian, Indian. He was your grandfather. He was the first man, and God said, hey, I got to give you a choice. If I don't give you a choice, it's not real love. If you're making it now with your, with your spouse, your spouse is proving they love you because all you got to do is, I need tender, uh, triple X, please me now. All you got to do is type something in to have what you want in your hands. No matter what, oh, you're ugly, uh, prostitution. It's all at your hands now. It's so if your husband and your wife is living righteous and they come home and they love you and, and respect you and you're in one accord, oh, you, you've, you've proved because what's right in front of you that you touch every day is not being used. It's every day. You've proved that you love your spouse. I've never been on a dating site. I've never logged into one. Actually, that's a lie. I did look at Craigslist one time just to see what was out there. It was enough to scare me, gave me the willies and said, ooh, I got to preach against this stuff. And that was the infant stage of this whole thing. Now it's on and ballooned into uh, a mushroom cloud of destruction. So God puts in front of Adam a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He says, every tree is for you. Oh, see, what people don't understand, there's things for you as a Christian Oh, you want to, Paul says, you, you, you can't control yourself. You want a woman? Hey, I, I'd suggest that you should stay single like me. You'll get more done than if you're married because a married man, he, he, he's now concerned how he can please his wife. But one who's single is constantly focused on how he can please the Lord. Nevertheless, if you get married, it's better that you do rather than burn in lust, right? But you must only marry in the house of God. You must only marry a born-again Christian. Oh, to see a born-again Christian. Many say they're born again. Many now think they're born again. But that's why the Bible says, by the fruits they produce, you shall judge them. Because a good tree can't bear bad fruit, and a bad tree can't bear good fruit. So you got to sit around and watch them. you got to see what kind of fruit they can produce. Well, what kind of, well, everything's good. Everybody can produce good fruit. But when things are bad, oh, now, now you see what's in somebody. Oh, that recession, you couldn't give a house away. I was calling people. I said, hey, I'm at the auction. I can get you a home in Chandler. I can get you a house with a stucco, a stucco house in an HOA so that you can't tear things up with bad neighbors and 50 cars. These are HOA-restricted neighborhoods. They, they got tile roofs. They got two-car garages. They're $80,000. 
Oh, bro, could you call me when they're 50? I said, dude, these were, these were $400,000. This is 80 grand. You can rent it right now for 1500 Oh, man, I don't even know what those renters would pay. Call me when it's 50. I'm, I'm in on it at 50. Are you kidding me? These things are all $500,000 now. What? It, was, it showed you someone who went through it, they realized that these markets can turn like a dime. They can be shut off like a spigot. How do they shut it off? Because the money system quit loaning it. I flipped houses. I flipped all my houses. I would flip them with credit cards. I had $50,000 cards, $60,000 cards. One day, all of a sudden, they were calling me. Hey, your new credit limit is 1000 They went from fifty and $20,000 to $1,000. They weren't going to put themselves out there because so many people were defaulting on the cards. They shut the spigots off. I went to go get a home equity line of uh, uh, credit on a home that I own free and clear. They said, oh... We're not doing those anymore. You couldn't get a loan on something that was free and clear. No, we're not, we're not doing those right now. They shut the spigots off. Oh, they got all the control. You don't understand. They got the control to shut the spigots off of whatever they want. Well, what is this? A, God told us to go, and our, the commandment to mankind was to be fruitful and multiply. He said every tree, every seed-bearing herb, this is for your meat, this is for your pleasure. Every animal, Adam named them, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, the animals that roam the earth, he named them all. And it says he walked with God in the cool of the garden. And he was butt naked too. Now, now imagine how free he is. Because Pete, me and him, we learn, man, we're knuckling. And we don't even knuckle close. We kind of knuckle at a distance. But Mike, I got to kind of be on guard. And I got to let him know. And I shift real fast when he hugs me. So he gets this, this hug. Because one time he hugged me and he breathed on my neck. Like he, was, he was drinking in some love. I, I mean, I know it was genuine and holy, but it just, there's something about that. I'm, I'm German. Man, Germans didn't even say we loved you. We show you we love you by going to work every day. I, I never heard I love you only from my grandmother, but my grandmother loved her dog Biffer and took that Biffer to McDonald's. That did dog didn't like just hamburgers. He liked cheeseburgers. So when she said she loved me, the devil kind of used that to his advantage. Are you sure? Adam would come and God would show up in the cool of the garden. Could you imagine running to God, the creator of heaven and earth, the one that reached down into the dust after he created everything, saw that it was good. He reaches down into dirt. He forms man into his image. He breathes into his nostrils and he becomes a living being. Could you imagine bone being alive like that? I see my three kids. I got three kids. I seen them come out of that womb. Oh, thank you, Lord. No birth defect. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's been prophesied. My kids would be retarded for everything I said. I mean, I was thinking it. I heard that 50 times from the evil things I would do. Oh, thank you. That's three in a row. Oh, Lord, I can't hear. Thank you so much. But they come out and they don't do nothing. They cry. They can barely open. I mean, it's work. This guy, boom, he's a full-grown man. I mean, he probably looked like Bruce Jenner before he became Caitlyn. Bruce Jenner was the greatest athlete in the history of America in 1976. He was, he was doing it. He won the heptathlon. You got to compete in, I don't know, eight or nine, ten events in the Olympics. He wins the whole, I mean, this guy, Adam, comes out like that. Could you imagine the embrace to your father? There's no, oh, no, is this weird? There's no weird. This is your father. You love him incredible he created you and you look and there's no perversion there's no sickness there's no disease there's no sorrow oh and then he one-ups that even he looks around he named all the animals they were all in pairs he got click there's something missing oh there's so something supposed to click in you when something's missing because you're made in the image of god in his case he sees there's no suitable helper for him he says i got you puts him to sleep takes out one of his bones one of his ribs, and he creates a woman, a man with a womb that could reproduce, and she was to be his helpmate. Oh, she wasn't women lived out and trying to fight to be a lady boss. She was happy to live life. She was happy to serve God and serving Adam and being his helpmate. She was close to God, loving God, and she was seeing Adam subdue the earth and multiply and taking care of the garden. It was incredible. And he says, look, I'm giving you everything. But see, I'm interested in true love. I got these angels. They, they stabbed me in the back. I got this Lucifer. I gave him everything. You should have seen the beauty he had. It, I gave him it all. They stabbed me in my back. They were in heaven with me. That's all they knew. They chose to rebel and follow Lucifer. They stabbed me in the back. So I got to give you a choice. This is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
If you eat of this, all this is for you. Everything is for you. I'll come down. We'll talk every day. I love you. You're mine. I'm, just, I'm your father. You're my son. This is my daughter. If you eat this, you will surely die. That's free will. You got it. There's no true love. I have to tell these inmates, 20 years of preaching in the jail, they get so fiery up. They get so excited. But as it gets closer to their release date, I got to start being real with them. And sometimes they can't take it. I said, hey, I hate to tell you this isn't real Christianity. What are you saying? What, what I'm feeling isn't real? What are you telling me? What God's speaking to me in the word isn't real? This prayer is getting answered isn't real? I said, nope, that's not what I'm telling you. All that's real. But it's not real because you don't have any real choices in here. That TV up there is an old 1986 box TV with a fuzzy, uh, fuzzy channel. You can't hear the volume. It's nothing but stinky men in here. There's nothing to do. You don't have a lawyer. You've got a public defender. You're facing a charge that you could get probation or you could get five years. It's unknown and it's a mystery when you face these judges. So you're desperate. You have a need. And since you were desperate and you had a need, you actually reached out for God because there was no other competition for you in here. There was nothing else left. He had to isolate you and put you in a place where you would actually sober up and get by mandate. They don't allow you to take any type of methadone. They don't like you. Oh, I take 16 painkillers a day. Not in here. No, you don't. You get high blood pressure medicine. That's it. I seen dudes come in on testosterone replacement therapy. What's up, man? Good to see you. Because they had no testosterone. They cut them off cold turkey. It was like someone, every time I see him, I was like, whew. So I was thinking, man, how come this dude's face is staying the same, but his body's getting smaller? It was the inflammation. Body was inflamed going through these withdrawals. I seen it all. All these guys, and I had to tell him, look, he had to do this to you. He had to allow you to go through a failure. He had to go through, you, through a trial. And he's allowed you to do it over and over, but you didn't listen. So he had to allow you to go into confinement. Some of you, you got so bad, you were hurting people. You were hurting the innocent. Some were even hurting children. Some were killing people. He said he had to put you in a cage that people do animals. This wasn't real Christianity. This is true, the Bible, the experience you had, it's real, but the test wasn't true Christianity. True Christianity is a test to see what you're going to do with right and wrong. True Christianity is what you're going to do when no one sees you, when nobody else knows but the Lord, when something's just laid up there and you choose not to do it. When you can log on to something, when you can just think something in your mind, you can just play back a memory in your mind, you can just take an offense when no one else knows you're taking the offense but the Lord himself, and you choose not to do it. And I said, you know what the devil has on his, on his side is time. He's a master at working time. Oh, you'll find to be a good Christian minister, you're going to have to have patience. I tell the story all the time, man. I was going, I was going fast, I was going hard all my life. I'd sleep long, but when I got up, I went hard every day, all the time. I was in business. I was trying to make money. I was trying to invest. I was doing this. I was flipping houses. I was a realtor. I was doing everything. I was doing ministry. And I would go through these troubles, and I would come to Mike, and I said, this is happening. This is going on. And I'd sit down, and I would wait for What kind of profound wisdom do you have? You've been counseling for 20 years. I'm expecting some gems. This is going to be a great learning experience for you. And? What do you mean you got an appointment waiting? What do you mean? I, I just told you all that for an answer. Oh, the Lord's going to teach you something. I said, man, I hope, well, I hope you weren't beating these insurance companies when you charged them for all your, all your people. You've got to have more than this. And then the second time and the third time, and it took about the third time when I finally slowed my brain down and said, wait a minute, I don't have any patience to wait for an answer. I've been so impatient all my life, and God knew I was so impatient, and I had attention deficit disorder, and I had all these problems, self-imposed, self-inflicted, and I would not wait. I would try to make a way where there was no way. I tried to open doors that weren't open. I tried to shut doors that I couldn't shut. I tried all these things, and I had to learn how to wait for an answer from God. 
you got to learn to wait for the word of God before you do something. It shows who you are. When you log on to something, you, you, oh, you better think what you're going to do. It says, put no vain things before thy eyes. It says, be careful what you put before your ears, what you allow in your ears. It says, be careful who you listen to. It, it says, be careful who you surround yourself around. It says, be careful who's in authority over you, who's teaching you. you, you, you got to be a learner of hearing God's voice. You got to be one that, that studies, and not only have you studied to show yourself approved, understanding that you're a workman, not needing to be ashamed. Why wouldn't you be ashamed when you studied the Word of God? Because He's teaching you patience. He's teaching you that God will always perform His Word, but you got to wait on Him, and you got to have faith and expectation that He will come through and answer those prayers. Because if you keep trying to do everything your way, you're going to keep running into dead ends, you're going to keep running into roadblocks, you're going to find a snare, you're going to find a trap. And he's going to continually sit up, set him up before you, and you're going to continue the stronghold cycle. Oh, first he puts a hold. Oh, and you don't stop, and you don't listen, and you don't recalibrate and correct yourself to the word of God in prayer and patience. Oh, now he goes to the stronghold. When someone has a stronghold, oh, my son was a wrestler. And it wasn't the prettiest of wrestling. When you watch high school heavyweights, the problem is they get too big. He was 270 pounds at one point, but the muscle mass index isn't quite there at 16 years old that it needs to be. So you're kind of flopping around, and then there's this extra perspiration that gets on the heavyweights that's not there with the other weights because you're carrying around all this extra body fat. And these wrestling matches would be like two to one, one to nothing, three to nothing. I mean, they were, they were uneventful. You get down to these guys 155, and they were doing it. There was 16 to 14 and scoring and on their back and bridging up on their neck for three minutes before they could, you know, end the round and go to the next. It was, it was quite impressive, but not the heavyweights. But what he did after a while, he finally got and he says, hey, I'm never going to really be, get a medal. I mean, if you wrestle all your life, 99% of all wrestlers, high school is it. it. It is only the super freaks that go on to college. Every year in the state of Arizona, the fifth largest state, I think, in, in America, and, uh, or the city, Maricopa County, and, and Arizona might send four college wrestlers out of the whole state. But he said, hey, it's all or nothing this next year. I better learn some moves. And the moves he learned was instead of all this tie up and trying to take him down with a single leg, and he learned these moves, locking his hands. I don't know how you do it. But after he would lock these hands, he had three moves from there where he would drop down and then he would come through and trip somebody. He had like three things he could do so you couldn't counter it because there was three ways he could go and he'd change it up. But it was that stronghold. This grip was the stronghold. If he got you in that grip, that's when the coach started, get out of that, whatever they yell, whatever the counter move is, that someone's got that stronghold down around your waist, that's a high probability of a scoring position. Well, the Bible's telling you that we're wrestling, but we're not wrestling like some high school wrestlers that worst case it happens, you get embarrassed in front of, you know, a hundred students and, and someone put you on the back and he's cheering. No, this is a wrestling match unto the death where there's one winner. And so his goal first to be able to control you is to get this stronghold. Now you can maneuver a person once he gets that stronghold. Well, a stronghold is, yes, it's demons. Yes, they're making you sin. But the minute you go through a deliverance of a stronghold, now you got to go down and you got to reboot your mind. You cannot let him get in that same position again. Because if all the demons go out, then you will do the same thing you did before because we are creatures of habit. We're creatures that trained ourselves. Can you imagine? People drink soda pop and diet soda. This, if, if, if a coyote comes in off the desert out here in Buckeye, makes it, he, he sees a bowl of soda. He wouldn't take one lick of that garbage. He knows it's a toxin. He wouldn't lick battery acid. He's looking for water, but we drink it. Why? Because they put these commercials into your head, and as a little kid, you got a little sugar rush. Oh, now it's aspartame. Oh, aspartame is, is a synthetic chemical that was patented by Donald Rumsfeld, the former Secretary of Defense. Look that stuff up. You want to take something from that psycho, demon-infected person? Oh, go look at his history. So he stole that from somebody because he wasn't a chemist, and he's got it ooh, banking off it. To what? Get somebody sick to get you sick. 
So people, just like they do things that are bad for their health, they'll do things that are bad for your soul. What happens? You start skirting the edges. You're not lying at first, but you're, you're not fighting anymore. You're kind of, well, hey, you're kind of looking around. I'll use those inmates as, as an example. First, they're fighting. Man, they're working hard. They're trying to get a place. They're trying to get an apartment. I've seen people that all they could get, their family gave them a box trucks from U-Haul because they're high felons and some of them are sex offenders. You can't live in apartment complexes if you're a sex offender. They won't take you. You don't have any money. You can't come home. They don't want you. You're a sex offender. So they rent them a U-Haul box truck and they sleep in the box truck. $20 a day plus mileage. Well, they ain't putting any miles on it until U-Haul says, we need that back. You're not putting any miles on it. And they have nothing. So people will begin to, to work. And then you work with someone. You're showing yourself you're a hard worker. You're showing yourself you're diligent. You're showing yourself you're committed. Next thing you know, people trust you. Hey, I need a place to stay. Hey, I have a room. I have a bed. I have an opportunity for you to stay here. Then they're trying to get a car. And then they get these cars. Oh, but what's the devil do? Hey, I see this man's now using the faith. He's using what I taught him in the prisons. He's using that word of God, which he learned to stand on. But he was standing with these brothers. He was standing with this group of people. He had 14 people in his prayer group. He had 16 people that he was going to chapel with, 30 people he was going to chapel with. He was eating lunch with five of his best friends. He had all this God around him, and they were in one accord. He says, now I got to isolate him from the body of Christ. And the first thing they do is they go to these churches, and they're confused, especially when they got saved in jail, they're confused when they go to these churches. And they're like, bro, what is this, man? You sent me over there. I mean, the guy preached pretty decent, but what was that? I said, hey, I hate to tell you, this is America. He, he, he looped warmed everybody out. Yeah, the song, he goes, man, it was even weird with the singing, man. I mean, I didn't feel it. These dudes will sing. Man, they got horrible voices. They got voices like me. I should not be singing publicly. If I do, I should be lowering it down two notches below the, 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 the next guy. So I blend in with everybody. And these guys will sing. Oh, this sounds like a bunch of hound dogs. But you can feel God in there. You can feel something. There's some worship. There's some praise. There's some reconnection that, hey, if sin came into the world through one man, Adam. He chose to eat that fruit. He chose to disobey God. See, Adam, Eve was deceived. Adam wasn't deceived. He knew what he was doing was outright wrong. But he was perplexed because it wasn't happening in the timing. Oh, key point here. When she ate it, he was like, well, we'll let her go. Come on, man. He was selling out from the jump. Can you imagine? You got this off-the-hook woman, incredible. I mean, she's, she's the only one. She's the everything. You got nothing to compare her with, and it's the best. I mean, she's, she's kind. She's loving. She's supportive. And she's watching Satan tempt her right there. She looks at it, at it and says, well, it looks good for food. I've eaten food like this. It surely is ripe. It's ready. It's seasoned. And wow, I'd love to be wise, to be like God, knowing good and evil. Hey, I'm going to go. And Adam's like, well, let's see if she dies. I, yeah, I like that wisdom too. She drops dead. I ain't eating this thing. She eats it and doesn't die. She reaches over and gives it to him. He's like, whoa, man, I love what, are you feeling it? Kind of like someone getting out. Are you feeling it? Is it good? Yeah, okay, I'll take it. Boom. Sin comes into the world through one man, Adam, your greatest grandfather. Therefore, the end result is death reigns in everybody. Oh, people don't understand. That's why people bump into all these people. They hang with everybody, and they think everybody's just neutral. They think everybody's just not that bad. What you don't understand is everybody is a sinner. And since everybody is a sinner, they're actually a slave. Now, God is a merciful God, so he's not going to turn someone who, looking at Playboy, into a child predator pedophile overnight. It's going to take He's going to take him whittling down. He's going to have to go to lesbianism. He's going to have to go to sodomy. He's going to have to go to group sex. He's going to, he's going to have to go on down in the chains and the bondage with the demons and go deeper most of the time. Unless it's a demon of pedophilia in the bloodline, and now little kids are already molesting each other, your brothers and sisters. That thing came down from a forefather. That's called a generational curse. Now that thing can happen right out of the gate because what? It was already in the bloodline. And so it doesn't play fair. God does, the devil doesn't play fair. He abuses children. He gets you when you're a child. You're manifesting his infrastructure as a teenager, as an adult, but he basically put his infrastructure in you as a child, and you had the sin gene in you so he could do whatever he wanted to you because you were dead. Now, I know that kids do not go to hell when they die. 
Your, your sins are not imputed upon you, counted against you by God until you're to the age of accountability. So if you're Asian, you're smarter than a whip, probably at like seven. You know right from wrong. Your brain is clicking. Me, I'm kind of a knucklehead and a slow learner. I probably would have been 12, maybe 14 before I would have truly known. Probably 12, I would assume. But at one point when you know what you're not to do, but you do it anyway, because in every man, no matter where he is born, what nationality, what part of the earth, he has a conscience as a man and a woman being made in the image of God. And then you say, well, what if they've never heard of Jesus? Well, he's going to judge you according to your conscience. Did you have remorse for your sin? Were you looking for a savior? Were you looking to God to forgive you? There was no such thing as atheism until they started breaking that thing down and feeding it to your universities. Everybody knew there was a God. The sun and the moon and the stars and the seasons reveal and show you there's a God. Seeing a man show that guy right there proves there's God. He's made in the image of God. So sin comes in and now the Bible says this. Now that Jesus Christ came and took our place. Now salvation was to the Jews first. His, his own didn't receive him. So now he goes into the whole world and he's looking to save everybody. Cornelius is the first one who was chosen by God as a Gentile to be saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. And they got the revelation. God is saving everybody now. So he's calling everybody to be saved. He desires that no man would perish, but every man come to the knowledge of Jesus and be born again. But if you don't have the spirit of Jesus Christ, the Bible says you're not neutral. You have the spirit of the Antichrist. Ooh, and so you said, well, well hey, this girl's not bad. She goes to work. Her dad's, uh, he's a tailor. He makes suits. Her, her mother is a teacher's aide. I mean, these are good people. They pay their bills. They got a nice house. Their lawn is immaculate. Uh, her teeth are white. She doesn't have any dirt underneath her nails. I mean, she's great looking. They don't have demons. Not yet until you start messing with them. When you, a blood-bought, born-again child of the living God, who is carrying the anointing of the Holy Spirit, who has sealed you with the Holy Ghost and the promise inside your spirit, man, now you are a threat to the devil and a target wherever you go, whenever you're around. You are a target. He never takes his foot off the gas looking to take you out to isolate you. So the minute you're around somebody you shouldn't be around and you're yoking yourself up with somebody you shouldn't, you're fellowshipping with somebody that you shouldn't, the demons will just attack that person now. How many times have men been around women? Oh, <laughs> football players, I hate to tell you. <laughs> sometimes people want to be them. But, man, you get around, there's some ugly bunch of them. I mean, I was probably middle of the road type guy, but I got a couple friends, boy. They were ugly. And they were so ugly, I didn't want to tell them they were ugly. And some of these guys, they're married now. It's funny. And I love them, and I preach to all of them. A couple of them been saved. A couple of them got some seeds planted. But a common thing I hear all the time is uh, not always with people that aren't that handsome, but it's like, yeah, I, I, what's funny? And it's funny how they tell you it when you first meet You know what? I wasn't attracted to him at all when I first met him. Sometimes, as a matter of fact, I didn't even like him. What happened? Oh, his spirits. The spirits go into operation to draw people. The devil will give you the world to forfeit your soul. He needs to make you happy. He needs to give you something to occupy your time. Hey, he get, needs to give you a chase and a conquest and a victory. He needs to stimulate your mind. He knows how the human mind works. He knows how to keep somebody preoccupied. He knows how to set someone up in a deception. So what happens is things get forged. Oh, soul ties are often there was no initial attraction. And that's what's perplexing to people. I, I don't know why I like him. I wasn't even attracted. Now he slaps me in the face, but I just love him. And then he calls me and he tells me I'm sorry, that he's sorry. And I begin to believe him and I come back and now he's done it three and four times. And they don't understand why they keep coming back because it's a stronghold. Oh, why do you keep going back to porn? Why do you keep going back to your pity party? Why do you keep going back to thinking negative when you have the word of God, when you have the blood of Jesus Christ, when you've been redeemed from the curse of the law, when now you can spend time with your father like Adam did in the cool of the garden, you can have that type of intimacy. Why do you keep going through these cycles? Because he has a stronghold on you. And then now you've, some of you have been through deliverance. You've got some spirits out and say, well, why am I not shooting like a star? Why don't I have four ministries like Pete? Why am I all filled with joy like Pete? Because you haven't renewed your mind. 
You're still, you still got the sinful cravings and expectations of what God owes you or what this world owes you or what's due you because of the short deck that you were dealt when you were a kid or how you've been mistreated and where's my sevenfold return for everything that was stolen. And you begin to place a demand on these things out of the timing of God because you have no patience. Oh, there's a stronghold for the believer. David knew all about it. David wrote about it. Psalms 9.9, he said, The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed and a stronghold in times of trouble. He knew where to go when he needed God. He knew where he needed to go when he was outmanned and he was outmatched and he was outnumbered. He knew when he didn't have everything he needed, he knew where to go to get it. And God was that source and he knew how to get out of times of trouble. In Psalms chapter 144, 1 and 2, he says, Blessed be the Lord my rock, who trains my hand for war and my fingers for battle, my loving kindness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and the one in whom I take refuge, who subdues my people under me. Oh, see, if you can't find God as a strong tower and a refuge, you can't do it unless you're a praiser. Oh, see, he, he was a praiser. He began to praise him right out of the beginning. And then he said, look, once I started praising him, I entered into the mind of Christ. I entered into the will of Christ. And God wants you to be a warrior. Oh, we're not, we're not fighting Al-Qaeda and ISIS. I'm not, I'm not in 300 fighting people on the battlefield with a sword and a spear and a shield. I'm fighting a spiritual war against interdimensional beings, demons that are operating in the spirit world. The spirit world is more real than me and you because it was from the beginning. We were created at a time and a place. And we were created for a duration of time to live on this earth and then face the judgment. These were eternal beings. And they were, they were here for outside of time and outside of space. When God made the earth and God made humanity, he made it according to time and space. The spirit world isn't subjected that way. That's why you can't see them. But they can do things. Many of you have seen shadow figures. Many of you have had demons press on your throat to let you know, I'm your oppressor. See, God will make the devil expose himself at times and seasons so you have what's called a wake-up call. A wake-up call to realize what real Christianity is. The jailbirds, they got to realize what Christianity is when you get on the outside. You were in a training center. You were in a boot camp. When a, when a soldier goes into boot camp, he's down here at Camp Pendleton, and they've got the most elite guys that become the Marines. These guys can do 25 pull-ups. They can do 100 push-ups. They can run efficiency in a mile. They have low body fat if they're not that percentage of body fat, they lose it fast because you've got to keep up with the group or you are out and you'll go on down to the army. These guys are trained and they're trained for two months, three months, four months, whatever it is, according to your specification and, and your job that you'll have. But you're learning how to do everything before you're on the battle and you have to actually do it. Because if you're not trained repetitively again and again where it's second nature where you know under times of distress when you understand under times of trouble how to activate your weaponry how to activate your headsets to get the adequate communication for backups or reinforcements if you can't do it repetitively like a secondhand nature you won't be able to do it in real battle so before they send you to battle since america is some of the greatest war starters uh, they know how to get somebody going and so you got to get yourself alone with God. You got to get yourself where you can hear from God. And then you got to take on the mindset that this is a spiritual battle, that the things I'm doing, it's not just what the Baptist guy told you. Oh, you need to crucify your flesh. It's just your flesh. No one can tame it. Oh, what a wicked man I am. Oh, and then Paul goes on to say, who will deliver me from this evil? Oh, see, if a person's been born again, he's not evil. He's been, he's been declared righteous. Why? Because when he put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ, then Jesus' righteousness and perfection is imputed upon you, and his blood is shed that covers you and washes your sins away into the sea of forgetfulness where God chooses to remember them against you no more. So if that's what he did, and you don't have the mindset of a warrior, then the devil brings up those sins which God already paid for in full, and he brings them up and he reminds you of them. How about this one? 
Look what you did to her. Oh, you think you should be a preacher now? After what you said to her and you womanized her and you seduced her? Oh, what about all those things you stole all your life? You had a job as a salesman. You weren't a good salesman. You believed you were a salesman, but you knew when you first started you were a liar and everybody around you was a liar, but you kept doing it till your conscience was seared, until you had a big house, until you had all this phony friends around you. Now you think you should just be able to live for God and not pay your dues after you hurt everybody? Oh, but once you got born again and you repented from the sins, that means you do apologize, but true repentance is I'm not going that way anymore. You go the other way. Is there a time when you got to make restitution? Is there a time when you got to make things right? Hey, it happened in the Bible. It happened in the Bible. And people in the New Testament said, hey, look, Zacchaeus, I was, I, if I did any robbery, a sevenfold today. Half my money down the line goes to the poor. I know a dude doing it right now. He's a multimillionaire. He's on fire for Jesus. And he's going every day. You can catch him at the Greyhound bus depot. And he just, before he goes to work, he's preaching to everybody. And then he's passing out, who needs the word of God? This changed my life. You can change your life. And he passes it out and he blesses people. Then he goes around second time. Who needs prayer? And now he's seeing God answers prayers now. God wasn't going to leave him just out there as a messenger of good news. Oh, once you pass that test and you prove yourself a workman and you understand that God backs up his word with signs, wonders, and miracles and you studied to show yourself approved, there's faith, there's an expectation now that somebody can get a touch from God. Now just go to church and watch Joel Osteen. His teeth are really white. His face is tight too from Botox. You'll like his face. Oh, it's much prettier. Don't go to the Deliverance Center. Oh, those, face, those faces are just, uh, go be happy as a Christian. Live your best life now. No, he don't say that. He tells him it's a war now. Satan's going to fight you now. He's not going to let this word just get rooted up in you. It's in you. But he ain't going to let it get watered now. He's got to shut the resources off because the seed in the ground, if it doesn't have any water and it dries up, it'll never grow. So he's going to try to dry you out. It's a war to keep you dry. You've got to keep in the word of God. You've got to keep the faith. You've got to stir some things up. You've got to hear God's voice. You've got to pray through some things. You've got to stand on what he said you could have and don't let the devil take it from you. And what happens is that seed will grow up and it'll blossom and it'll bear good fruit. But unless you know it's a war, you never get to the stages of really bearing fruit, seeing somebody saved, seeing somebody that got saved now growing on and growing up and becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ, one that can lead other people to Jesus, leading somebody else that can now see people divinely healed, seeing other people that can now uh, do these wonderful things and have these gifts that you didn't even have. Now you see somebody that you ministered to operating in those gifts, and then what you'll find is some of the people will come back and minister to you. Sometimes I get down. I know that's hard to believe. But sometimes in this business, you can get down. And it normally comes to me in the morning. I can normally check out, stay strong, because I, I don't want to toss and turn at night. I, I want to go to bed. Pain goes and comes in the night. But I know the verse, joy comes with the morning. So I'm going to not let the sun go down on my wrath. I deal with my issues, and, and I pray for people, and I go to bed. But sometimes there's a spirit kind of lingering around, trying to eat me up. Hey, man, what's the use of dealing with people that are only takers? Hey, why don't you just try to find only givers? Uh, but what happens is that doesn't really make sense because you don't know in 30, 20 years of ministry, you don't know who's going to turn around and be a giver because they don't look like you think they'd look. They kind of look sometimes like nothings and nobodies. They kind of look like people that didn't really respond to the gospel. Sometimes they look like people you didn't know if they were really saved. Uh, uh, Daniel Usbot, he used to look at me like this all the time the first three days. Like, I, I think he was like, on, I had a ticking time. Like, I'm going to see if this dude pops. If I can see him pop, I'm out of this place. All I got to see is he's just another quack like everybody else will get back to the old life. So, hey, sometimes you don't know how they look, what they look like. It's what God does. Oh, because somebody gets the vision that Jesus Christ reconciled them to the Father. And since he did the reconciliation by such a horrific death of his son, he showed the price, the value that you had. Then they begin to birth an expectation to spend some time with their father, not just to get saved, to have their best life now, not just to get saved and take an easy road. But hey, he who's been forgiven much loves much, and it computes into their mind, and they actually become servants of God. 
So I can't do what the devil tries to hammer me in the morning. I can't just do it to the ones that are going to be winners because I don't know who's going to do it. I don't know who's going to grab a hold of the word of God. I don't know who will really fight, take thoughts captive and obedient, tell the devil no, and actually step out on faith. And hey, God doesn't always heal people the first time, the second time. Sometimes it's the 20th, 30th time. And then divine healing starts happening. Sometimes you're casting out devils and the Lord says, just keep casting them out of yourself first. Then you're going to see clearly how to remove a speck out of somebody else's eye. But but if you don't grow weary, you're going to bear fruit in due season if you don't stop. And so what will happen is Pete will call me up. And Pete's an earlier riser than me. And so he's already prayed and he's already done his work with God. And he's already heard from the Lord. And so now he's speaking life to me. And when he's speaking life to me, well, man, I, I, that becomes real clear. Hey, I, I can't grow weary. There's times and seasons. I've seen people turn around that were going from takers to turn it around later. Some people, they turn around much later. Sometimes they come back and say, hey, that word, it, he, I, got, I got a guy, I just spent time with him. I spent three hours with him back in Nebraska. And he goes, I know what you were doing. I feel you kind of tricked me when you bought me, brought me to that Bible study in 1996. You asked me if, you want, if I wanted to hang out. I was ready to go. I didn't know we were going to a club. We were drinking. Uh, he, he just got his doctor's license. He was a doctor here in Phoenix. He was ready to roll, had money, had a house, ended up at a Bible study. And this is funny. <laughs> you know, when God wants to make a statement and there's an anointing of the Holy Ghost, God will do some amazing things that you just can't forget. And God is my witness. This is what happened. And my father-in-law was preaching to him and said, hey, do you want to make a commitment to Jesus? He goes, no, nah, not right now. You know, I'm not sure if God's really real. I mean, if God had just shown me a divine sign and it's during monsoon season and it goes, and the lights go out. The father-in-law's got to go out and hit the breakers, and everyone's laughing like, is that enough sign for you? And we're all kind of freaked out. We're not taking it like it's a joke. And he goes, yeah, that's kind of interesting. It wasn't until his wife had cancer, a tumor on his brain, her brain, rather. It was a tumor on her brain, the love of his life. It's not until she's in the hospital, and he's praying, and he gave up his practice to be at his wife's bedside. It was during the recession. If you weren't there, couldn't afford the staff, couldn't afford. She was his secretary. It was give it all up to see my wife live and praying for his wife. And his wife was a hardcore Catholic from Mexico, didn't know nothing but hand signals and rituals and beads and praying to saints. And when she, she came out uh, of the coma, she said, I met Jesus. She said, yeah, he said, I'm going to send you back. It was so peaceful. I wanted to stay. But Jesus said, no, you got to go back. She goes back. Next thing you know, he's coming and seeing. And, and she says, hey, Jesus said that I'm going to be getting out of the ICU today. And I'm going to be going up to the second story for recovery, getting ready to get out of here. And they said, well, you talk to the doctor? You talk to the nurses? No, no, none of them. Jesus, he came and sat right there on my bed and told me. Next thing you know, the doctor comes in 30, 40 minutes later. It happens exactly like she said. The next thing happens is Jesus now speaks a voice. Oh, because God doesn't want you to always have to see things. He wants you to have faith. He says to the disciples, blessed are you because you see, but how much more blessed are those who believe who do not see? And so the last time, no one said when she was going to get out, he speaks in a voice, you're going home today. She tells her husband, he's like, well, what do you mean? Who told you? The, the nurse, the doctor? No, Jesus did. I'm going home today. Well, they never said you're going home. They never said anything about it or when it would be. They came in. She went home that day. He gets saved. You think he ain't going to get saved? You think he's not going to correlate divine appointments, seeds what were planted? And it took, that was in 1995. That wasn't until 2000, I think, maybe, and nine. That was 14 years later. 14 years later. God's in the turnaround business. He's in the miracle business. You'll, you'll reap some of the rewards of the supernatural lifestyle if you do your part. If you can't hear from God, you can't fight demons. They'll confuse you. They're too smart. You, you can't just have a healing uh, ministry until you pay the price, setting yourself apart, having faith, because God doesn't perform miracles if you don't have faith. Well, Lord, you told me to do this. Well, that's a good way to start. You start where you are. But God's going to show you you're going to have to have faith, believing that he is. The only way that you can believe that he is and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him if you're one who diligently seeks him. Samuel, David spoke to the Lord the words of a song. Oh, now he's standing on it. Now he starts singing it. 
The words of the song that one day the Lord had delivered him from the hand of his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the God of my strength in whom I trust, my shield and my horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my savior. You saved me from violence and I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. And so shall I be saved from my enemies. And when the waves of death surround me and the floods of ungodliness made me afraid, the sorrows of Shiloh surrounded me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and I cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his temple and my cry entered his ears. Oh, you're not hearing me. I would have got some amen. You mean you can't just kick these things out? On YouTube, they just come out, they flop like fish, they scream like dogs, they tell them they're Satan. He says, Satan, go, they go. Well, you can't do that. How come you just can't do that? That's a lot easier. I think I might need a YouTube deliverance minister. You mean I got to forge a relationship with Jesus Christ enough where I can actually hear him and I've never heard him before, but I got to believe that I can hear him? I got to actually believe that so much that I dedicate myself, I press in and pray until I break through and hear him? Oh, see, he's not going to show up in your trouble if, he's not, if you're not a praiser, if you're not a worshiper, if you're not doing it in the downtime, if you're not doing it in the time when he's giving you like the inmate who has to sit down under incarceration and lock and key and bars, but you can sit down and you can shut your TV off, you can shut something down, you can get rid of your bowling club, and you can sit down and you can spend some time with God, read his word and pray and begin to believe the word of God, and then he'll start hearing, then he'll start performing. Now you start going through tribulations and trials and challenges, you'll find when you're pressing into God, you're really not thinking about methane. Amphetamines. You're really not thinking about popping fentanyl. You're really not thinking about how you're tired you are looking at your wife and how she gained 50 pounds and she ain't sexy no more and you might as well get it somewhere else because she ain't giving it to you and now you're fighting and your kids are all snot nosed, playing video games, cussing at everybody, won't come home, won't listen to nothing. Oh, come on now. You're going to have to have some prayer life to fix these things. What's he going to do? First thing he does is restore the love that you have for him. He's already showed you that he loved you by sending his only begotten son and making him sin for you. So then you start learning how to love him back. Once you can love your father back, you can love everything that the Lord gave you. You can love your children. You can love your wife. You can love this job and stop grumbling and complaining about it, that it's not enough, that they want too much, that they don't respect you, you should have took an advancement, and you're full of all these offenses. Offenses come to those who haven't been purified with the love of God. Because once you get love, you can see through it. You can see through the snares. You can see that it's just a trap of the enemy trying to catch you. Strongholds are what? The Bible refers to them as negative patterns or negative thinkings. They're prideful thoughts. They're worldly messages. And they've been written in your mind through what? When you lived according to the course of this world by the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works, and the sons of disobedience. But God conveyed you out of that kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son in whom he loves. But now you got to do your part, which is you renew your mind. Okay. You want to pull down strongholds? God can be your stronghold and refuge, but you can't serve two masters. That's an oxymoron. I can't have God as my stronghold and my refuge and have a stronghold of Satan and have a divorce curse, have some sexual perversion curse, have some grumbling and complaining curse, have some sort of curse of poverty. I can't have both. No man can serve two masters. He'll be loyal to the one, he'll despise the other, or he'll love one and hate the other. So you come to the crossroads of making the decisions to hate the other side, to hate the other voice, to recognize it. If you can't recognize the voice of another, then, hey, have you really been saved? Because that's one of the first signs God says, my sheep, which is my people, they know my voice. And the voice of another, they won't follow it. Come on, what's he talking about? He's talking about the old conformity, the way he warped your mind, the way that you used to take an offense, the way that you used to grumble, the way that your flesh used to cry out to be served and you would obey it and do whatever it told you to do. Oh, now you're conveyed over to the power of his, his son. The Holy Spirit is now with you. It's a greater power than the power of the devil. As Jesus defeated the devil at the cross of the Calvary, he gives you the same power. Behold, I give you power over the devil power. The, de the Holy Ghost power is greater than the demonic power. There's only two power sources on earth. It's demonic power 
or it's God's power. There's no white magic, black magic power. There's no kundalini new age waking up your third eye, or lighting up your chakras. It's devil power or it's God's power. God's power is the Holy Spirit who leads you and guides you into all truth. His Holy Spirit comes and comforts you in your time of need. How does he comfort you in your time of need? Because you developed a relationship with God. So we've got to come out of these things. We've got to come out of the old patterns, negative patterns. We've got to come out of prideful thoughts, worldly messages. We've got to come out of these negative messages. We've got to renew this thing and reestablish it. We've got to get out of that old endless cycle. Yeah, he brings the heat. He brings the heat on people. When they're coming out, he brings the heat. Hey, it's a little harder at first. Oh, man. It was hard for Walter Payton to break through the front line of the defenders. Oh, it's not quite as hard to break through it for Walter Payton anyway, who has superior speed and strength to most human beings. It wasn't as hard for two linebackers to stop him. And oh, if he got past the line and the linebackers, oh, it was butter getting through them defensive backs. You ever seen Walter Payton stiff arm a defensive back? He's the one that invented this thing. And his mindset was, hey, they were trying to hurt me and inflict something. I figured they had a high percentage of tackling me, but I was going to make them feel the pain I feel. And he had developed the stiff arm. Oh, you ain't going to have a Holy Ghost stiff arm to shun the wicked one if there's no fight in you. If there's no believing in God's word that he gave you superior power over what you're dealing with. There is no temptation to give in to man than which he can look around and talk to God and, and ask God, how do I get out of this jam? I'm facing bankruptcy. How do I get out of this jam? My, my kids are on drugs. How do I get out of this jam? I'm headed for divorce. How do I get out of this jam? I got a lukewarm church and I feel so vested into it. I got a soul tie with it. I've tithed over $100,000 to that church. How do I get out of it? They quit preaching the hardcore word of God. The Holy Spirit doesn't move there anymore. Show me a way. And God begins to make a way where there is no way. He begins to lead his children by his voice to the paths of righteousness and truth into green pastures and still waters into the restoration of your soul. If you what? Listen, well, I'm a Christian. Lord, if it be your will, show me the green pastures. You can't keep walking like you used to walk and expect it to be different. That was the definition of, definition of insanity, that you did the same thing repetitively again and again and expected a different result. You have to do something different. What's different? Well, you better study. You better get in the Word. You better grab it as eternal and life and bread and direction and revelation of where you are. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 4 through 6, he says, the weapons. Oh, he gives you weapons? Oh, yeah, there's just not the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the belt of truth, the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of truth. It's not just the word of God, which is the sword. Oh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty in God. What, what, I got the mighty weapons of God. What, you're not just supposed to have them. You're not just supposed to look like something. You ever seen all, you ever been to Caesar's palace? You got all these guys, they look, they look like they're, they're Roman soldiers. They all used to be fit and they had swords and they had all the, 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 the attire. They had the shields, but they never swung that thing one time in their life. They, they, just, they just look like a soldier. They physically look like one. They had all the soldiers' uh, weaponry, but they weren't real soldiers they were posers. They were posing to be these live mannequins to draw you in so you could lose money under a demonic spirit. It was, it was a setup. A real soldier, what? He's got weapons, and they're not carnal. They're not just sitting there doing nothing, whatever I can get for myself, see what happens. No, they're mighty weapons in God for what? Pulling down strongholds. You want to break a stronghold? The devil's got a grip on you. He's maneuvering you around. He's got multiple moves to bring you into depression, bring you into lies, bring you back to drugs or alcohol or fornication. He's got different maneuvers for you when he locks up on you. You want him broken? You better have some weapons. And the weapons got to be in the revelation and understanding that they're Holy Spirit powered. They're not carnal. They're mighty in God. And then they pull down strongholds. And then they cast down arguments. I'm not going to argue with a Hebrew Israelite. I ain't going to waste my breath. I already watched enough of them. Give me Isaiah 53. And they start barking. There ain't no signs and wonders and miracles with them. There ain't no revelation of the New Testament with them. 
There's neither Jew nor Gentile any longer under the dispensation of grace. All can come through the shed blood of God Almighty, his son, crucified on the cross of Calvary. It's all over. It started with Cornelius, a white Italian. And then it went on over to Asia and across the whole world. There's not just the tribes, the 12 tribes and the Native Americans and the Indians and the Asians and the white mans. The devil, are you out of your mind? It says, don't cast your pearls to swine. At least they trample them underfoot. Look, these doctrines, I, I, I'm not going to entertain them. I saw my buddy, I played football with him, and I'm like, man, you're still, you still jabbing up the white man when you got a white wife. And I said, bro, you did pretty good. She's real good looking, and your face is getting leathery. You're in your 50s. That's a 30-year-old face. Looks like you better be a little more kinder to what God gave you. Uh, soon after following on Facebook, there's no longer that wife. Oh, that devil was doing what? Exactly what he told you he was going to do in the scriptures. He was going to steal. First, he stole some truth. He was raised and he was taught Christian values. Catholics are taught Christian values. Catholics are the easiest people to lead to Jesus Christ. As Derek Prince said, hey, all you got to do is teach them about their two favorite human beings, Peter and Mary, who both needed the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that just not the revelation of Jesus being the only begotten son of the Father, died on the cross, resurrected on the third day, that they needed the power of God, which was the Holy Spirit. Oh, he used to lead them to Jesus like it was nothing. I, uh, somehow, that's been the majority of my ministry in the jails. Faith comes by hearing, hearing of the word of God. You start preaching the word of God, someone who loved God will come alive. So you got to cast down these arguments. you got to cast them down when they're coming against you. That was a major trick. In the last days, many will begin to follow doctrines and the teachings of demons. You know how many hookers I've preached to? And I would tell them about Jesus. They'll just come up to you in Waikiki Beach. Man, they don't care. They're, they're working. The cops don't bust nobody. Um, and you know how many I preached about Jesus? And they said, well, I already got Jesus. I said, well, you got to turn from your sins. You can't be a lady of the night. This says the sexual moral won't inherit the kingdom of, of heaven. It excludes you. She goes, no, Jesus already died for my sins. His blood was already shed for my sins, past, present, and future. I said, oh, no, 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 that's a trickery of a spirit taught you that no without repentance there is no gospel and that's the time that they walked away i've heard three three prostitutes tell me that same doctrine you know how many other people believe that asinine doctrine that's someone that's not warring a good warfare that's someone that knows nothing about the attributes of god he knows nothing about spiritual weaponry he knows nothing even about the fight between good and evil the interdimensional beings which are principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this age spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly realms demons and satan running the whole show orchestrating it from his throne somewhere on this earth i would assume it's hollywood or it's some pharmaceutical center Probably now in Silicon Valley, so he can get all those lies verbatim by the billions. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments. At first, you're going to argue with yourself. Get up and pray. Oh, man, I got to go to work. Man, I'm 50 and doing construction. My back ain't made for this. Oh, you better cast it down, and you better sit down, and you better pray, because it ain't going to get better. It's going to get worse. Oh, I'm under grace. Oh, grace will put you in a cell. Grace, I've seen many people don't even get saved in jail until they go to solitary confinement. Oh, you ever seen a tough gangster? Pete's been to prison before. Man, they can do push-ups like a champ. Man, they, they chin check people. They're called torpedoes. They beat people up in the bathroom. I've seen them when they get out of solitary confinement. Hey, man, good to see you. <laughs> they come back to like a 12-year-old. Man, I miss church. Man, I miss this place. What do you mean? You sat here frowning the whole time. Every time you walked out of here, didn't shake no one's hand. Here, I miss this. Oh, the true self comes out when they lock you up. Only able to come out. Sometimes they don't even get to you. You're supposed to come out one hour a day. Sometimes they can't because they're understaffed and you just sit in there. It used to be dark in, in the early 2000s. It was dark. It wasn't even any light. The only light came in through the food tray. What happens? Their brains would reboot. I miss people. 
hey, what am I doing taking all these problems and offenses with everybody? Why why I got to be all mean and stuff? Man, why do I got to do that? I want to I talk to somebody. Hey, I want to hear someone's story. I want to hear a good story. I want to see, I want to hear somebody go home. I don't want to be envious of someone going home and, because I'm not going home. Why do I think that way? I want someone to go home even if it's not me. They start coming out of themselves. It takes solitary confinement sometimes before you come out of yourself. That's the key to Christianity, dying to yourself, dying to the old man. Because if anyone is in Christ, that means he spends time with Christ after he was born again by Jesus Christ and his shed blood, and he develops a new relationship. The old man passes, the new man comes. He's now in Christ. He's just not knowledgeable about Christ. He doesn't just show up and sing some songs and listen to the word and get happy for an hour or two, maybe show up to a Bible study for an hour or two in the week. No, he's spending time with God. Why? Because he loves him. Because the revelation of the value of the life that he was given by God has came back. His senses came back. Tell people who were mean to me, I liked everybody. Man, I, I didn't judge nobody. Man, I didn't judge you because you got clothes from Kmart. I didn't judge that until junior high. What, man? They, these kids were old, man. There was two kids, man. Floyd Byron and Alan Zollicoffer. Those guys were 18 years old. The one had a full beard. And I hadn't hit puberty. I was 12. Man, you realize people don't like you for what? Because they don't like you. Man, it starts fear, starts shaping you. Insecurity starts molding you. Oh, now you get a little hate back. Why? Because it was implemented upon you, and now you want to do as unto others as it was done to you. Oh, now negative is working in reverse. As God says, do unto others as you would like other people to do to you, even though they don't do it. That's the new life in Christ. You start getting the vision that you got to change. you got to do sometimes the opposite of what you used to do. you got to hope and believe and expect, expect some things when nothing ever used to come your way. Why? Because you read the word, and he said he would do it. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. If you say, if I'm working with someone and you tell them the verse and they go, well, but. Come on, man, you ain't ready for deliverance. You, you got to go back to Bible school. But. No, there is no buts. He's not a respecter of persons. Do you think he picked me and Steve because there was, and Pete and Peter and my, because there was something good in us? You think, oh, Rick, he's pretty average IQ. Uh, he's got a face for radio. Um, you know what? He's not very motivated. He's pretty selfish. Man, I can really use a guy like that. He's going to be a gem in the kingdom. No, he didn't look at anything good. No, it's his power. It's his mercy. He trusts in himself. He knows he's the almighty God, the everlasting father. He knows he's the great I am. He knows he's the God that can speak things into existence. He can take sustenance and dirt and make a human being and make him alive and give him eternal life. He knows who he is. He's not confused. You can't be confused and have a relationship with Jesus. You can't be confused and get delivered. God helps you when you don't deserve it. He saved you when you weren't looking for him. He's merciful all the time. Now, he had to discipline you because you wouldn't listen. You've been through what you've been through so you could get to a place like this tonight so that you could go through something on to victory, on to success, up out of their miry pit, out of the stronghold and have it broken so it never returns. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Jesus Christ and ready to punish. Oh, there's the warfare now. Punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Paul said, I don't beat aimlessly. I'm not, a, I'm not an air boxer. I beat my body down. I bring it in a subjection that it would obey me. He cut himself off from sin that's so easily entangled. He was running a race so that he could win. He wasn't just walking aimlessly in confusion, in circles, like all these weird animals. I don't know if it's real. Seen it on, on YouTube, Facebook. They're walking in circles everywhere. I don't know what that means, but it's probably a sign that, hey, you're just like these animals. Man became like a brute beast, and he's just going in circles, repeating the same thing. You're locked in a stronghold. You keep going around in circles. You want to do better. You hope to get better. You do a little better, only to be knocked back down and compete that cycle. That's why all these animals, I think, are moving all around in circles. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. There's probably some, something happening I don't know about, but it looks to me a little bit 
resembling of humans and what they're doing. Oh no, we need Trump 2024. Change this thing around. He's going to make a world great. Dude, you start chanting for people, you're going to get the great man of peace real quick. He's going to be the masterful deceiver. He's going to do lying signs and wonders and miracles. The whole world's going to think he's the savior. The Jews are going to think he's the Messiah. The, the, all these people are ready for somebody to come and save them. A man. Oh, God already came in the form of a man 2,000 years ago and paid the price in full. Now he's at the right hand of the Father, the mercy seat. So if you need a Savior, you need to get to the mercy seat. So what does he do? He helps those who have need. Who needs mercy? Those who have a need. Those who need to have a way made where there is no way, a door open that is now shut. A need door shut that you can't shut yourself because you tried. A part of that circle lifestyle. Going around and around and around. Oh, that, you got to fight. Seems, oh, your friends, you think they won't think you're crazy? My wife started thinking I was crazy. I started saying, no, I'm not going to do it. I, I didn't meet Mike Smith yet, but I knew the devil. I'd already been preaching for 10 years. He was just telling me one more time, hey, this, this recession, you lost all your money. You can't get that money back. It's going to take 10, 15. It could take 20 years to get all that money. So don't doing anything is a waste of time. I didn't want to do any jobs. I didn't want to do this because it didn't pay enough. It couldn't get me my money back. And he said, well, let's just smoke some weed. I said, I ain't doing that no more. That's the devil. I know that's the devil. I, I've seen the devil. The devil talked to me in my car. I know he told me my name is Lehi. I'm the one getting you high, and I know you like it, and I got all these people in this neighborhood, and I don't want you to preach to none of them. I said, I already know he's talking through this stuff. I ain't doing it. My wife's like, are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm fine. I'm telling this devil no. He's telling me one more time. Oh, I begin to implement that word. Why? I didn't truly understand deliverance, but God was teaching me the foundation of it. You can't just take it laying down. You can't just expect it to wear off like things used to wear off because you had mercy and you had grace and you just, you just allowed some certain things to be taken from you so you were able to move on because the devil said, hey, checkmate, I already got that. Hey, let's go on to this next phase, phase rather, of pillaging the person. You got to talk back to the devil. You got to do something. You got to smash your computer if that's what it takes. You got to go get a flip phone if that's what you got to do. You got to get away from all your friends. Oh, well, you don't love us no more, brother. Oh, you're one of them Christians. You're one of them holy rollers now. Oh, you're too righteous for us. No, I'm coming for you. Yeah, I got to get myself ready to come for you. I'm coming. I'm going to see your soul saved just like he saved mine, but I can't come for you and show you the light if I go back into darkness. I love you too much to go there. I'll see you soon. You better fight. You better, use your, you better use your faith. You better use the word of God. And then what you'll see is God will come down and he'll see you. He'll see what you're doing. He'll see that there's a flame in there. He'll see that there's something small in there. And then he'll start to bring some water to it. He'll start to bring some fire to it. He'll, he'll bring whatever it takes to make that thing increase and grow until you can prosper, until you can be in health, that your soul can prosper. That's his desire. Before we go into the deliverance, everybody can get more delivered. You can get more delivered. Half of it is in your mind. Some of it's in your body. Some of it's confusion. You don't quite know. You, you got to just stand on the word of God. You just got to hate it. You know it's evil. That's where it starts with everybody. But hey, some of you have already been progressing. Oh, now you start slicing them up. With the sword, you just start repeating those words of God. Before you said them, but you weren't using them with faith. You weren't using them with an expectation of something to be broken to another level. Pete said, you want to go to another level? We all said, yeah, we want to go to another level. We well, take some fighting now. And it's not carnal. So you don't got to yell at him. You don't got to scream at him. You just got to stand firm in the promises of God. God loves you. He will never leave you and he'll never forsake you. He already began the work. You wouldn't be here if you weren't born again. And since he began the work, he promised he would finish the work. Have you backslid? Most of us have. Have you got yourself into an entanglement? Yes, you have. Some of you never got out of it once you got saved. 
It's been with you for years and years. But God promises to finish what he began. You weren't some orphan, some misfit like the devil told you that he didn't care about you, that because your family was all, you know, out of whack and crazy that you had to suffer for their sins. That's all lies. God just had to bring you to a position to understand that there were spiritual weapons. Spiritual weapons are only activated by faith. And you have to pull down these arguments, these things that exalt themselves above the knowledge of God. Taking offense is trying to say, oh, that wasn't for you. Everybody doesn't like Nancy Pelosi. Have you seen her face and what you did to America? It's okay to hate Nancy Pelosi. Uh, no, you can't take an offense with nobody. No matter what kind of evil, we're supposed to pray for our enemies. We're supposed to pray for them. I ain't got no war against no LGBT community. My war is against the spirit world of perversion that infiltrated us. So my job is to pray for them, that they would have eyes open whenever that is so that they could get saved. So on the day of judgment, they wouldn't be cast into the lake of fire. So I can't take an offense with nobody. I don't like what they're doing. I don't like this Balenciaga and all their pedophilia in your face so they can send you a handbag, sell it to you for $20,000. Oh, I don't like that stuff. But my war is against the demons that set it all up, not those people. I know when you looked at the lady's face holding them little blood fake babies. Oh, I know you want to say, ooh, lay down, I'll crack you. I know we all thought it. But you got to have a spiritual perspective. Oh, no. Somebody that's glorifying Satanism and the murder and the sacrifice of children is under a strong delusion. Under a strong delusion, unless God comes in great mercy and power to shine the light right through that thick darkness, oh, they ain't going to make it. So it better be somebody like you who actually has faith and has a relationship with Jesus. Because the lukewarm carnal Christian that can't get his own prayers answered ain't going to get the prayers answered to see the people from Balenciaga saved. So you got to pray for your enemies. You got to repent of this offense. You got to take thoughts captive. God forgave me. Since he forgave me everything. It's my reasonable service to do what he tells me to do and to forgive others. He told me, hey, you got free will. Just like Adam had free will with that tree in the Garden of Eden. You got free will. You can do whatever you want. But hey, these sins end in death. This is rebellion. You start sinning, he's going to put a hold, he's going to put a stronghold on you, he's going to oppress you, he's going to depress you, he's going to deceive you, he's going to kill you. So you got free will. He says, I set before you blessings and cursings, choose life. So when you choose life, you're turning your back on all those sins that led to death. That's repentance. And you got to apologize first. So let's do it now from our hearts. Lord, we just slow it down now, Lord. Thank you for, Lord, you've already opened many of these saints' ears. Many people watching, many people here, they already hear your voice. They broke through. Thank you, Lord. We broke through to be able to know you truly love us with an unconditional love, with mercy. Oh, Lord, thank you for that mercy. I'm praying now. Lord, that we could all enter in to truly understand the depths of the mercy of God. Thank you, Jesus, that when we sinned against you, you weren't like people that turned their backs on us when we didn't live up to their expectations or hurt them. No, Lord, you stood faithful to us, and you still love us, and the mercy is still available, and the calling is still available Thank you so much for eternal life through Jesus Christ. Lord, I confess my sins, Lord. I haven't been living right. I got waxed cold by this world. I spend hours on my phone and on the television. I, I spend hours listening to negativity, and I spend minutes with you. Lord, I, I know that there's no way I'm going to bear fruit with that limited amount of time with you, Lord. So I have I acknowledge that my sin is because I'm not spending time in your word and in your presence. Please forgive me, Lord. I've been thinking about vengeance. I've been thinking about revenge. I've even been mad at you and blamed you for a few things that's been happening. But Lord, I sober myself, Lord. I come humbly and I acknowledge I've been sinning against you. And I've been reaping what I've been sowing. And I'm asking you to forgive me, Lord.
Forgive me the way that I treated you. Forgive me the way I treated your sons and daughters. Forgive me for the way that I treated the things that you gave me. I'm so sorry for being an ungrateful servant. I'm so sorry for not valuing your word. I'm so sorry I was willfully blinded. I knew it was a fight. It was in my heart. Your word was written in my heart that I had to fight back, that I had to resist, and I just laid down. It wasn't even much of a battle for the devil. I just laid down at times. Please forgive me, Lord. Please forgive me. I, I, I apologize to you. And Lord, I thank you for forgiving me. Your word is clear that if I would confess my sins, that you would be faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and count them against me no more. So I receive forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus. You took my place. You lived the life that I was required to live. Thank you that I'm found in you in your finished work. You're worthy, Lord, of praise and honor. Lord, I know that you hate spirits, demonic spirits. You give the ultimate Holy Spirit power to comfort, to teach, and even to convict, Lord. And I'm so sorry for not valuing the Holy Spirit power. And I looked around for other sources of power. Please forgive me for dabbling in occult type things, new age type things. Forgive me, Lord, for calling on other gods, for there is no other name under heaven and earth by which a man can be saved. The name of Jesus Christ. Forgive me of calling on any other gods. I repent tonight, Lord. And I want to be delivered from anything that came into my mind, any stronghold of deception, any stronghold of manipulation, manipulating your word, manipulating my will and my emotions. I want to be delivered from strongholds tonight, Lord. And I make a commitment to you. I'll renew my mind. I'll begin to put you first. I'll begin to spend time with you, worthy of a relationship of respect and love. Thank you that you're going to deliver me because I know you hate the devil. I thank you that you're going to teach me how to hate him as my eyes open and my ears open spiritually. So I forgive everyone, my mother and my father. I forgive myself. I've been mad at myself. I know I blew, I blew it. I messed up. Thank you for forgiving me. I forgive myself. I, I can only do it through Holy Ghost power now. I tried it on my own. I'm not going to repeat the stronghold of trying it on my own. I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to stand on your word. That's true, complete freedom and deliverance. And Lord, I pray you'd make light work of these demons tonight and move by your mighty hand and drive these out of all the people tonight. Everyone that comes forward, I thank you that you're going to deliver them all from strongholds. In Jesus' name, amen. If that's you and you know there's a level that you're supposed to go to tonight, you line up in between that mat and that carpet. Ministry team is going to come. We're going to pray for you. We're going to use some authority that God gave us to get you jump started. And spend some time. God will start moving. He'll, he'll help you. But don't just rush out of here. Challenge that voice of what's telling you to leave. Challenge that voice of God to tell you there's some hidden things in some people. I'll give you some time. Come on. There's some people got to come up here. Everybody ain't got to come up here, but there's some people got to come up here that ain't up here yet. Thank you, Lord, for giving him a spirit of courage. The first step of deliverance is stepping out in courage. I believe God wants to help me. I believe God can do a miracle. I believe he can make a way tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be your name on high. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, if you're not up front, don't leave. We're going to pray for everybody. We won't leave until we pray for everybody. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for your precious blood. Everybody is washing the blood who came here. Thank you for the blood that washed their sins away. Oh, the devil. The devil doesn't have authority over somebody that was washing the blood. He doesn't have authority over someone that was washing the blood. You're lying, devil. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from unrighteousness. Thank you for the shed blood, the remission of sins. Thank you, Lord. Satan now 
These people are washing the blood of Jesus Christ. They use their faith and you are trespassing. I declare you a trespasser in the children of God. I bind this devil of grumbling and complaining. I bind this devil of deception and lying in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. I bind every devil that twists the word of God in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. I bind every devil that manifested it as a sexual addiction. Every devil that manifested as a drug addiction, an alcohol addiction. I bind suicidal thoughts and self-destructive behavior in Jesus' name. And I command you now to come out of the people of God. I command you to come out of the people of God. I command you to come out of the people of God. Come out of the people of God. They're not going down with drugs. Come out of the people of God right now. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. They're not going down like that. I command this depression that came in when he was 12 to come out right now. That constant stronghold. He gets high. He gets built up. He does well. Gets friends only to be torn down with depression. I bind this strong man. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Depression. Come out of there. I command depression to come out right now. Come out. You lied to him about his value. Come out. You told him it was about his looks and about his skill. You come out right now. His value is a man. A man of God created in the image of Jesus Christ. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Thank you, Jesus, for your love for this woman. Thank you. Thank you. You made her beautiful. I break every lying spirit in the name of Jesus. Every lying spirit that came in through television. Every lying spirit that came in through movies. Every lying spirit that came in through music. Every lying spirit that was spoken through someone that caused her pain. I command this spirit of pain through words to come out in the name of Jesus. You cause her to be depressed. You cause her to be discouraged. You cause her not to believe the word of God for her, feeling she's not strong enough, not good enough. You are a liar. And that is you, Satan. And I command you to come out of the mind right now. The stronghold in the mind, I command you to come out. Come out of there right now. I loose you in the name of Jesus. Word curses. I loose you in the name of Jesus. I will loose the curse that I'm not enough. In the name of Jesus, God says she is enough. I command you to come out of there. She is enough. Come out of there right now. Go out, strong man, a destroyer. You come out of the central nervous system. I command you to come out of the brain and the brain stem. You come out of the memory banks right now. Come out of there right now. Take a big breath. He's going to go on out. Go on out of there. Come on out of there. Come out of there. Suicidal thoughts. Come out of there right now. Suicidal thoughts. Come out of there right now. Suicidal thoughts. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. All that pain in the soul. Come out. I break the curse now. Come out right now. You told her she wasn't beautiful. You told her she wasn't enough for God. You are a liar and I command you to come out. You told her she didn't have any spiritual gifts or calling. You are a liar. How dare you do this to a child of God. Come out of there. Come out. Another big breath. He'll come on out. Come out of the body. Every lie a man told her. Every evil that a man tried to do to seduce her body and take from her. I command you to come out right now. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Go. There he goes. Come out of there. Go. Go. Fight. He's coming out. I do not hate myself. Come out of there right now. You lied to me. I have the value that Jesus has placed on me as his daughter. There he goes. Go all the way out. Go all the way out. Go all the way out. Thank you, Lord. Bring this man out of the slumber. He's been in a spiritual slumber for years, Lord. Oh, Lord, the devil's eating up days now. Oh, Lord, thank you for mercy, Lord. I pray you would come in and soften his heart, Lord. Soften his heart, Lord, to receive truth. Soften his heart to believe for a better day with you, Lord. To believe again for the blessings and the things which you spoke to him when he first got saved. Give him a heart to believe right now. Thank you, Lord. Come out of there right now. Those voices in his head right now. I break any diagnosis of mental illness, devils, the doctors that try to tell him you need psych medications. You need, psych, you need medication for your mind. Come out right now. I command them curses to come out right now. Come out. This oppression spirit. 
come out right now in Jesus' name. I command the oppressor to come out. I command the oppressor to come out now. I charge you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. All that hatred that he had towards other people, all the hatreds he still had toward classmates, it moved over to church people for seasons. I command that spirit of offense to let him go right now. Spirit of offense, come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out. Take a big breath, sir. Take a big breath. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. I break your hold. I break your hold off my brother right now. He came for freedom to another level. I break your hold in his mind. I break your hold in his mind. Right now you're holding back his ministry. You're holding back his faith. You're holding back his hope. You're holding back his gifts. For the weapons of a warfare are not carnal but mighty in God for tearing down strongholds. Casting down arguments and everything that exalts itself against the mighty name of God and his word. Come out of there right now. I command you to come out of there right now. Devils that keep telling to push back, you don't have enough. Come out of there right now. You're a liar. Come out of there. Come out. You're telling him you don't have enough. He's got the Holy Ghost and the blood of Jesus Christ. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come all the way out of there. Come out of there. All that evil. Come out of there. All that poison. Come out of there. The poison of lies. Come out of there right now. The poison of lies. Come out of there. I break you now. Come out. You've been hiding in this body now. I break you now, these hiding devils of depression, these hiding devils of whispering assassins. I threw you out now. Come out of there. Generational curses. Generational curses of blasphemy. I command you to come out. Generational curses of saying there is no Jesus Christ. The curse is broken right now. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. You won't hide in the body. Strong man of blasphemy. I command you to come out of there. Go. 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 I loose your holes. Come out. Self-imposed curses. Believing your lies. I will not believe your lies anymore. The word of God is the truth. Come out. Come out. Go. 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 Keep fighting them. They're going. Go. From your belly. You got to leave. Come out. That spirit of death. Come out of there right now. Trying to get him sick. Fear of COVID. Fear of asthma. Come out of there. 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 All your sickness goes now. Come out of there. Always going to the doctor. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Asthma. Come out of there right now. Respiratory problems. Come out of there now. Come out of there. Take all your sickness and go. Chronic fatigue. I command you to go now. Chronic fatigue. Go. Go. Keep going. Go. Come out. Go. Come out of there. Go. There he goes. Come out of there right now. Depression. Depression. Come out of there. Keep coming out of these men. I command you to come out faster. I bind all your power. I separate every devil one from another. I forbid you to aid and abet one another. You will come out as your name is called. Come out of there. Fighting. Did you used to be married? You had a divorce? No? You, you, are you married now? Are you fighting with your wife? Okay, can you forgive her by, by faith? Lord, right now I repent of not leading my wife, Lord. I repent of any area I failed, Lord, not loving her, not forgiving her, not nurturing her and caring for her, not leading her spiritually. I repent right now. And I forgive her, Lord. I forgive her everything she said to me. I forgive her, Lord, of assassinating our marriage, not holding it valuable, Lord. I forgive her right now. I love my wife, and I don't want to lose her, Lord. I repent of all this hatred and envy, jealousy, offense that I've been taken with her. Come on out of there. Come on out of there. Come out of there. Come out. The spirit of divorce. Come out right now. This devil that's blaming his wife. Come out right now. It's not his wife's problem. He's the spiritual priest of the household. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. So what other problems you got? You got any sexual problems? You watching porn anything? Oh, I know who you are. You're what? You're, yeah. What else? Yeah, you're ministering and stuff. What's going on? Forgetfulness. So I tend to forget quite often. And then when I try to speak God's word to Don't people, leave any, anybody. We're coming around. We're making the move. Pre preach to other people. Like I get, I stumble over my words. I forget what I'm trying to say to them. Oh, okay. Heavenly Father, thank you for my brother, Yusvat. Thank you, Lord. You delivered him, Lord. You brought him out of that deception, Lord. You got him around those men of God. You called him to be a preacher. He wants to preach, Lord. Lord, I pray you drive out this stumbling block spirit. 
He's got the word of God written in his heart and mind. He shut that sin down two years ago. But this devil's trying to hide in here and twist him up and make him feel insecure and make him feel deficient. I break this devouring spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. I break the strong man destroyer in the mighty name of Jesus that brings doubt and unbelief, that begins to stumble and bumble his words. I break you in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. This day is this favor curse, not setting him up. Come out of there right now. He's got divine appointments. You've been blocking him. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now, all that brain fog. Come out of there, brain fog that came from them drugs. Come out of there right now. Brain fog still in that brain. Come out of there right now that came in through those drugs. I bind you in Jesus' name. Come out of that brain. Come out of that brain right now. Brain fog. Tongue twister. Come out of there right now. Dyslexia. You come out of there right now. PTSD from being in the war. Come out right now. All that trauma and fear. Come out right now. Come out of there. Can you help that guy? Trauma and fear. Come out. He's called to be a preacher. Keep going. Keep going. You're going on to glory. There's no more fentanyl in Jesus' name. There's no more fentanyl. There's no more backsliding. Come out of my mind. That liar. God already drew and drove out the devil of addiction. He's not addicted. He told me he don't even crave it anymore. Amen. Now those lies in the mind. You come out now. Lies in the mind. Come out of there through trauma. That childhood trauma of abuse when there was no mother to nurture him. There was no father to take care of him. I break the spirit of an orphan. I break the spirit of abandonment. I break the spirit of insecurities and fears and rejection. Come out of there rejection. Come out of there in the name of Jesus. Rejection. You go. Go, oh, Heavenly Father. Amen. Keep going. What's going on besides eating too much? Sorry. Yeah, Lord, that's a good sign. Lord, he was nervous back in the day. I'm poking fun, but Lord, you're allowing him to eat again. He's not nervous. He's not racing in his mind. Lord, you settled him down to enjoy some things, Lord. So, Lord, we just want to rejoice in the deliverance that he's already partook in. You've already let him taste of the goodness, Lord. Taste and victory of forgiven people that hurt him and that left him and abandoned him and abused him. Thank you, Lord. I'm praying right now that any stronghold that's blocking his preach, that's blocking his private time, his prayer time, any spirit that's trying to hold him back from financial blessings, I break that hold in the mighty name of Jesus. You're trying to hold him in his mind. You're trying to hold him in his expectations. You're trying to hold him back. You try to run him around in circles for days. You try to roll, run him around in circles for weeks and years. You are in the mind and you are lying. You're trying to get him to repeat the cycle. You're trying to have him another loss and another relationship, another guilt, another failure. And I I break it right now in the name of Jesus. I break it in the name of Jesus. Now begin to fight him in your mind. Fight him in your mind. I haven't been able to sleep right for a month. I quit oh. again a month ago. They oh. Just, man. No sleep? No sleep. I'm okay. having to drug myself to sleep. Okay. All right, let's pray for that. Lord, now the devil is trying to move over. He quit the drugs and he's trying to take his mind. He's trying to make him restless. Lord, that's that weed demon. It's that pharmacia demon. And he's trying to survive off getting him over to go to some medication for sleep. Devil, I know who you are. You are pharmakia. I break pharmakia. I break sorcery. You came in through all these illicit drugs. You came in through the weed. You were strong holding him with weed. And he turned his back on you by faith in Jesus' name. We turn on you and he will not go to painkillers. He will not go to sleeping medication. You are to come out of that body. This insomniac. You are to come out of this body right now. This restlessness. You are to come out of this body right now he has chosen not to go back to weed in jesus name. there he goes go out go out insomnia insomnia come out of there insomnia come out of there right now insomnia holding his sleep back come out a promises of god is rest promises of god is a strong mind come out of there keep fighting him go insomnia go go come out go out go out of there there you go. Keep going. I'll be back. Keep going. Come out of there. I want the confusion out of the mind. I want the confusion out of the mind. Telling her to stay in pain. You're a liar. I command the pain to come out right now. Pain from childhood. Pain from stress. Pain from fighting. Pain from loss. I command the pain spirit to come out. I command you to come out of the lymphatic system. I command you to come out of the brain. I command the pain and strain to go. Go. Pain and strain. Come out of there. Come out of there. Pain and strain. Come out of there. Come out of there. Take your poisons and go. Take your poisons of bitterness. Take your witchcraft, rebellion, and go. Take that fighting and go. Take that vengeance and go. Vengeance is the Lord. Come out of there. That vengeance spirit. I do not hate those women anymore. I do not hate those men anymore. You're to come out in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Keep praying for your wife. Tonight's the night in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for the fellowship between these two men. I pray the anointing of the Holy Spirit to understand the gospel. To understand, Lord, you've always loved him. Lord, he's not just stumbling across and finding you. You've been looking for him for years. You've been looking to help him. You've been looking to save him. You've been looking to reconcile him to you, Lord. Thank you for the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, we confess our sins. And we thank you, Jesus. We are asking you for eternal life through Christ Jesus. Lord, I need my mind back. I want my innocence back. I'm angry and I'm cynical. I don't believe for anything anymore. I think everything's just going to burn. But Lord, I want my hopeful expectation back so I can bless my family. I want to bless some of my friends. I do love them, Lord, but I got nothing to give in myself. I need you. Come into my life right now in Jesus' name. I bind every devil that came into those years of rebellion. I, re I bind all those devils of fighting, all those devils of drugs or alcohol, anything of substance abuse that came into his life. I place a curse of death on you in the name of Jesus. And to prove that this is a son of God washed in the blood and deliverance is his bread, you are coming out right now in Jesus' name. that man you wanted to kill him I forgive that man I'm not gonna kill him Lord I turn him over to you I don't hate him anymore I forgive him I don't want to kill him Lord there he goes come out I don't hate him I'm not gonna kill anybody Lord I repent of murder in my heart I repent of murder in my heart forgive me Lord of murdering people in my heart come out of there come out of there come out of there take all your poisons and go Take all your poisons and go. 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 Go out. Go out of my bones. Go out of my organs. You're trying to make my organs fail. Come out. You're trying to kill me. You told me I wasn't even going to heaven. You're a liar. I got Jesus Christ. I couldn't eat his bread unless he was my father. I'm being delivered from you, evil. Keep going. Keep casting them out for him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. She came in hopeless, but can leave hopeful. Thank you that you're the God of all hope, Lord. Lord, I don't know what kind of misery, Lord, went on in her life, but I know there were some takers that had been taken from her ever since she was a little girl. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you always loved her, and you want to help her right now, Lord. Some devouring spirits got in here that are tormenting her mind. She's not even believing anymore because they're spinning her in circles. Thank you for driving them out, Lord. So she don't have to go in circles. She can go to the Father. She can go to you, Lord, through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. You're the way maker. Satan, I command your torment to come out of her mind now. I command this torment. You've told her to even wish for death, that it would be better off if she was dead. I cancel that curse right now in Jesus' name. Come out of there. You're a spirit trying to convince her to die because you couldn't kill her and you know it. So you had to try to trick her mind to believe your will. Come out of there. Come out of there. Suicide. Come out of there right now. Self-destructive behavior. Come out of there right now. Can you get one of those buckets? Grab one of those buckets. Thanks. Come out of there. Come out of there. I forgive these men. I've had men around me forever. They always took from me. Some really look shiny and bright and they promised me, but they did the same thing. They always took, they always blamed me and resented me for everything I gave them, even when I gave them the best. Lord, I'm forgiving these men right now, Lord. Vengeance is yours, thank you. Vengeance is yours, Lord. You're the judge. I'm going to turn these men over to you, Lord. But I got to get this spirit of abuse out of me, Lord. I'm tired of being abused. I'm tired of being abandoned. I'm tired of being neglected. I'm tired of being without, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Satan, you're bound. I command you to come out of this woman now. I command this destructive spirit to come out in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Self-destructive behavior. You're trying to get her to believe your will so that she'll die because you can't kill her. I know what you've been doing. You've been tormenting her. You've even tried to put her on the streets. You try to get her to, to give up on everything. I cancel this assignment in Jesus' name. Pills, go. There you go. Get him out. Meth, pills, come out. Any drug, any drug, any alcohol. 
Oh, fentanyl, come out of there. Fentanyl, we're detoxing now, devil. Come out. Fentanyl, come out of there right now. All your chemicals and all your demons. Come out. She's done with you. That's why she came here. You don't cure nothing. You're a fake mask of the pain for four hours only to require more and more and more. Fentanyl, come out of there. You're sorcery. She's been communing with the devil of darkness and disease. I command the Santa Morta that came from the cartel who cursed those drugs. I command this curse to come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Get him out. Go. Keep going. Go. He'll come right out. Go. Don't stop that. Go. Hating myself. Go. Come out. Misery. Come out. All the violation that men violated my body. You come out. All those spirits. I don't want you. I command you to come out. Go. Go. Go in Jesus' name. Go out. Go out. Go out. Break him now. I'm, you're getting, I'm getting the spirits out. Detox is butter on toast. You're coming out. It's a demon. You come out of me. You come out of me. If i got to retrain my mind and detox, I'm good with it. But I'm not going with demons of addiction. I'm not going with demons of abuse and rejection. I'm not going demons with, with demons of self-hatred. You're coming out in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Get him out of there. All those needle demons that went into those hands. I command those needle demons to come out of the arms and the hands. Come out. All the needle demons, come out right now. All that smoking in the lungs. You come out right now. Put your hand right there. Come out of there. Come out. All your hepatitis. Come out of there. Take your hepatitis and go. Come out of there right now. You try to destroy the body. You try to destroy your soul in hell. But Jesus Christ intervenes tonight with mercy and power to drive you out, Satan. Come out of there. Come out of there. Go fight him now. Fight him. Go. Fight him. I hate you, Satan. I'm not fighting myself in here. I'm fighting Satan. You are the drug addict. I'm not a drug addict. I'm fighting your depression. I'm not depressed. You put yourself on me. Now come out. Come out of there. Come out of there. Go. Go. Two more coughs. Break is loose. He's on their chest. He's on your chest. She's on fentanyl. She's going to get delivered right now of all the years of abuse, all the years of abandonment, all the taking demons. Fight them. Fight them, my sister. They'll all come out. It takes a fight, streamers. Sometimes you got to fight a little harder. Sometimes you got to get the anointing of the Holy Ghost to come upon you. You got to receive power. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You'll receive power to be a witness. All witnesses get free. He wants you to be an example of victory. He wants you to be an example of what He does for people. Send the anointing of the Holy Ghost so He can be an example. Send the power so He can heal the sick and cast out devils. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Streamers, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you, Lord, everything that attacked is mine. Lord, he thought about it. Some he chewed up and ate, some he spit out. Anything that he spit out that was demonic, anything that was false, anything that was of trickery of men, anything that was a trickery of a spirit, I bind you. You won't hide in the mind of a man of God. You won't ha hide in the mind of an ambassador of the kingdom of God, a doer of the will of God and the word of God. You are lying. I command every liar, every kundalini spirit that tried to masquerade as an angel of light who appeared to be God, any hider, any devil hiding in the mind and the body and the will, I rebuke, I rebuke you now. We reject you now, and I command you to come out. Come out of there. You, come out of there. Guilt from it. Come out right now. The devil said, hey, you shouldn't have been tricked. Come out. That's false guilt. Come out right now. Fight that false guilt right now. Fight that false guilt. I command false guilt to come out of me right now. All that fake shame that told me I messed up and I was a failure somehow. What, I, what God, you were doing in me wasn't real. All that confusion interwining with the true word of God. He was truly saved. He was truly born again. The word of God was truly written on his heart and mind. He was truly sealed with the Holy Ghost and promise. This kundalini tried to attach themselves to his neck. You try to attach yourself to him. You try to give him some kind of third eye awakening garbage. You come out of there right now, you snake devil. I command you to loose and uncoil from that spine in Jesus' name. I command you to loose and uncoil right now. Come out. You try to twist everything. You try to twist your lies in. That's why you're always moving around. You are a foul devil. Come out of there right now. Come out. There you go. Drive him out. Fight him now. You got him going. Kundalini, come out of there. Kundalini, you're not going to wreck his ministry. Kundalini, come out of there. Hey, can you help this guy? Come out of there, Kundalini. 
Get, come out, Kundalini. Come out there. This is Kundalini. He tried to wreck his ministry. He tried to tell him it wasn't even real. No, it was real. That's why you attacked him. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out, Kundalini. Come out of there. Come out. You try to choke the true Jesus out. You try to choke true faith out. You try to give him an easy miracle. You try to give him an easy manifestation. You are a liar, devil. You masquerade as an angel of light, but you are wicked and you are exposed tonight. Come out of there. You're getting delivered. Fight him. You're getting delivered. Fight him. Lord, send the anointing for more of those. Those are great spirits, Lord. Thank you. Driving him out of his brain. Those are brain spirits. Let him keep going as he's going to minister the word of God. He's going to cast out demons. He's going to heal the sick. Send the anointing for more personal deliverance tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for filling this woman of God with the Holy Ghost. Thank you for filling her with the Holy Ghost and power. Thank you that you baptize her with fire, the Holy Ghost and fire to prophesy. Lord, to dream dreams, Lord. Thank you that you're giving him her access to the supernatural. Come out of there right now. Hey, God bless you, bro. Come again anytime. Hope to see you. Thank you. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Hey, could you do me a favor? Let me get you this list. I don't know if you've got this before, but I, you got to do this. It'll, it'll help you tremendously. You got a good deliverance for what you came in here with, right? But this one right here, good job, bro. Thanks. Thank you. You got, oh, you got this? Hey, my brother. Hey, this is your homework assignment. Take your time. I can't read it right here. Hey, don't worry, man. This is, ho this is homework for the week. Yeah, just take your time. It's a study. Hey. really enjoyed your message. Hey, God bless. Thank you for coming. Come again. Thank Amen. You so I, I, hey, I'm glad you got those two then. Yeah. Perfect. I, I got one of each. Oh, you'll be set. That's really going to help you. Hey, amen. Thank you. All right, Brother Dima, I'll see you soon. Hey, good job, my friend. What's your name? Hyman? 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 Yeah, I got, I got like voices and stuff. Why don't you come in here for a couple more rounds? Here, here's the deal. Those voices came in when you were beat down, right? When you were a kid. They got you when you were a kid, when you were abused, right? Someone hurt you. Someone ripped you off. Someone abandoned you, right? Yeah, you got to forgive those people. I don't even remember that. Oh, okay. Then we'll do it by faith. We can do that, right? That means that you're not harboring nothing, right? You're willing to let them go. Cool. You ever forgive yourself? Amen. Amen. That means he ain't got no legal rights. Let's speak it. You, you believe it in your heart. Let's speak it so that the whole spirit world knows. Heavenly Father, I'm standing here with my brother Jaime. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that he has faith in Jesus Christ, your only begotten son, Lord. Thank you, Lord. By faith, we're going to forgive those people. He can't even remember now. But somebody did him dirty back in the day in his childhood, in his infancy, Lord. If it was a father, if it was a mother, we forgive him. If it was a brother, a sister, or a family member, we forgive him. If it was a neighbor or a counselor or an adult, somebody that did something evil to hurt him, Lord, and broke him, we forgive them right now in Jesus' name. Forgive all those rip-off artists, scammers, betrayers. We forgive those women that turned on him dipped out we forgive them lord we forgive ourselves in jesus name and lord lord there is no reason for this devil to be in that brain talking in his head that's an absolute violation for your children for this man of god so thank you lord that we can partake of deliverance tonight lord and be free from these voices devil you're a liar I shut these voices down, I root you out, I separate you one from another, I forbid you to aid and abet one another, and I declare when your name is called, you come out of there right now in the name of Jesus. I call out rejection, I call out fear, I, command, I call out confusion, I call out these spirits that are manifesting as bipolar, as schizoaffective and schizophrenia. I bind you right now, I call you out right now, you are a devourer. Come out, there he goes, come out, come out. Come out. Come out of that brain right now. No more talking. No more talking him into drugs. No more talking him into evil. Come out. Those days are over. No more voices in this head. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. No more voices. Come out right now. You're over. Schizophrenia. Schizophrenia. Come out of there right now. Come out. All the swellings in his face from drugs and infections. Come out. 
All the sickness, come out of there right now. All the sickness, come out of there right now. Come out. Go ahead and sit right here. Make yourself at home. He's coming. We got to keep working him. You got the anointing. Don't hold back. Fight him now. No more. I'm not leaving with you talking in my head. Come out of there right now. I'm going to hear Jesus. I'm going to hear my own thoughts. I'm going to wrestle with my own decisions. I'm going to talk with God. You ain't talking in my head now. Come out. Schizophrenia, come out. Schizophrenia, come out of there right now. Schizoaffective, come out of there. Come out. All those voices from rejection, come out of there right now. All those curses, come out. Catholic spirits, come out right now. All those voices that came in through the bloodline from praying to saints and praying to Mother Mary, come out right now. Come out of there right now. I command you to come out of there. I command you to come out of there right now. All hospital spirits, all spirits that come in through medicines, all spirits that come in through drugs and pharmacia, I command you to come out right now. Fight them. I'm not going home with you. I'm not going home with you. That's it. You talk to him. I'm not going home with you. I want you out of my head. You put me in the hospital. You try to get me sick. You try to give me COVID. I'm tired of this. So I command you to come out in Jesus' name. I command you to come out. I command you to come out. Come out of there. Come out of there. Yell at him in your mind, not with your lips, but in your mind. Say, I hate you, voice. I'm not going to allow you to talk in my head anymore. I'm tired of this. You've been tormenting me. I got the broken body of Jesus Christ, access to the Father. I got access to healing. I got access to freedom. Tonight I'm free. That means you leave in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. Come on, fight him. Come all the way out. 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 Hey, my friend. Can you get that, can you get that guy? Can you get that guy for me? Come out. I'm not, I don't want you talking. What did you go to, what did you go to the hospital for? Pain in my stomach. What was wrong with it? Every time I pee, it hurt. Okay, they said you had an infection? They don't know what it is. They don't know. All right, every devil messing with his genitals. Lord, we repent of sexual sin, masturbation, voyeurism, sex out of wedlock. We repent of the sexual sin. And I bind this devil that's messing with his urinary tract. I bind this devil that's messing with his organs in Jesus' name. I command your sickness to leave now. I command your sickness and your and your inflammation to leave. I command this viral infection to leave. I command this pain spirit to leave. Come out of there right now. Come out of that body right now. Loose his genitals in Jesus' name. Loose his genitals right now. Loose that urinary tract right now in Jesus' name. You're coming out of there. This mystery pain, this mystery sickness, all these poisons in the lymphatic system, cancers and tumors, any mystery stuff from, from jabs. You come out in Jesus' name. Go, go. right out of there. You'll come right out of your genitals. You'll come right out of there. Urinary tract infection will come right out of there. Come out of there right now. You're a urinary tract infection. Go. Urinary tract infection. Go. Come out of there. Keep fighting. He's fighting brain demons. Fight for him. My friend's going to fight for you. Fight him, my, buddy, my brother. Jaime, it's, day, it's the day of freedom. It's the day of freedom. It's the day of freedom. All that hardness in his heart. All the hardness in his heart. Come out. All the hardness in his heart. All that perfectionism, come out of there right now. Religious perfectionism, not feeling good enough. Devils that block him from the grace of God. Devils that block him from the mercy of God. Come out of there right now. Devils that block him from mercy and grace. In Jesus' name, come out of there. Streamers, I'm going to pray for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I lift up all the streamers. Streamers, just reach out, touch the screen. Oh, God is not subjected to time and space. The Holy Spirit is your ever-present help in your time of need. If you really need Him, you'll step out in faith and touch that screen just as you in your faith. In the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody that needs a touch that's watched this long, Lord. I pray you'd touch them. I pray you'd heal their bodies, Lord. I pray you'd bring the divine healing by your stripes. 
we are healed. Lord, we cast the check of opportunity by faith and believe you want us well. And I rebuke the devil of infirmity, sickness, and disease, and I command you to loose these streamers. Loose right now migraine headaches. Loose tumors right now in the name of Jesus. Loose arthritis in the name of Jesus Christ. Loose degeneration of the disc and the joints and the marrow. Loose bone cancer and leukemia. Loose right now in the name of Jesus. I command you to come out of the mind right now. Mystery illnesses like fibromyalgia, which come from rejection. We are not rejected. Demons of diabetes that come from rejection. We loose you because we are no longer rejected but reconciled. I command you, come out right now. Take a big breath, streamers. Take a big breath in the mighty name of Jesus. Take a big breath. That's your chance right now. Take a big breath. Oh, you get a demon out of your way of doubt and unbelief. You'll get healed quick. Your faith will spring up fast, and you'll receive the blessing. Tell the devil, today I get healed. By, my, by his stripes, I am healed. Lord, I pray you'd heal the streamers' minds. Heal their will and emotions. I pray you'd give them patience. I pray you'd instill in them wisdom and understanding when they read the word of God. Thank you, Jesus, for healing everybody. Thank you for delivering everybody. We love you, Lord. Thank you for anointing this place. Thank you for stirring up saints to pray for us. We love you, Lord. Amen.